When Han San took a look inside, he was shocked. Inside the Chiminia, a pair of eyes were looking up at him. Fortunately, Hansen had been through a lot, so he maintained his cool and did not look away. Instead, he just stared right back at the eyes. It didn't look real. The owner of the eyes was something clad in armor, and it was dark like the Chiminia itself. The being was sitting inside the Chiminia with just its eyes showing, and Han San couldn't make out anything else. On some level, however, it looked human. Human? Spirit? Or humanoid creature? Han San wondered to himself, as he continued staring back down at the pair of eyes in the armor. Bauer climbed atop Han Sen's shoulder and looked down the exhaust again. Seeing the creature clad in armor, even she thought it was a curious thing. Not long after, Little Fairy, Jade Little Lion, Little Silver, and Little Star arrived. They also took a look at what was inside the Chiminia. The eyes inside the Chiminia were unmoving. They continued to stare at Han San and ignored the others that were now present. Han Sen's heart eventually skipped a beat. With the eyes staring at him, it felt as if he was being watched. It shocked him, and he thought to himself, Does this mean that this is the thing that keeps watching me in God's ruin? As Han San continued to get stared at by those eyes, he wondered if the thing was watching every creature, or if it really was transfixed with Han San himself. Han San had originally thought every creature that entered God's ruin might get watched, but with the eyes staring at him, ignoring all the others, he did not think his theory was correct. Little Fairy and the others all looked bored after seeing it. They thought it might be a treasure, not something living. Still, in their hearts, there was some element of shock. The Chiminia had exuded a horrible icy flame. It was brutal even in a neighboring proximity which prohibited them from getting close. The creature was now sitting there in the Chiminia, and only heaven would know how long it might have been burning for. Whatever the answer was, they could guess how powerful the creature inside might have been. They were in such surprise, though, they didn't know if they should leave. The creature in the Chiminia had seen them, and if it chose to alert the black seahorses and a chase ensued, they'd all find themselves dead very quickly. Jade Little Lion and Little Star had become super class, but not even they would help triumph against eleven black seahorses. Before they could run off, though, they heard a not too distant sound of crying. It shocked them. They looked around for the source and saw a one meter tall ice seahorse. Somehow, it was inside the sea of clouds. With its megaphone looking mouth, it was making those sounds at them. It did not seem hostile, and it just looked at them with curiosity. But after the noise subsided, the bigger ice seahorses and black seahorses quit their get together. Then, a few dozen eyes turned to stare at Hansan and his group. Run, Hansen said, and immediately took off running. Hansen's power was very strong, but he had only reached super. Every black seahorse was super class, but there was also the ice seahorses backing them up and the enigmatic creature inside the Chiminia. If they stayed behind for a fight, it was likely they would end up in bad shape. They kept running downhill as the little seahorse followed. The eleven black seahorses that had seen them looked incredibly angry, and they gave an earnest chase. They were much faster than Jade Little Lion, too, who was now super. Oh no, these black seahorses are too scary. We'll be dead if they catch us. Jade Little Lion looked back and was shocked by what he saw. A black seahorse was directly behind him. Hansan chomped his teeth, then grabbed Bauer and Little Silver and brought them onto Little Star's back. Then he shouted, Come up here. Run, Little Star. Little Fairy leaped up and so did the Little Seahorse. It looked like it was actually having fun. Star sea Beast used its Star sea Power, and then, its body shone with countless stars like a galaxy. Its speed was supremely fast now, as well. Wait for me. Jade Little Lion caught up, but he was too big. All he could do was cling to Star sea Beast's tail. With the stars all around, Star sea Beast's body enabled it to traverse through glaciers. The Black Seahorses were unable to catch anything, and all they did was crash into the glaciers, shattering them. Still, the black seahorses were determined and not yet willing to abandon the chase. Star Sea Beast continued to travel through the glaciers like this, as the black seahorses hounded them from behind. Aside from the black seahorses, the ice seahorses had started to chase them, too. They made a shrill moaning sound. Young. All of a sudden, 
The black seahorses then turned and entered the clouds. The chains from the Chimenea manifested and attached to the black seahorses. The chains bound the necks of the black seahorses and prohibited them from traveling any further. The chains pulled them back all the way to the Chimenea. They grumbled and grunted with anger, unable to escape the binding. The ice seahorses were still able to maintain their pursuit of Star Sea Beast, but when it traveled through a few additional glaciers, the seahorses lost track of Star Sea Beast. They were able to hear the cries of the seahorses when the pursuit was on, but they couldn't any longer. Star Sea Beast is great for escaping. Hansen felt rather happy on the inside. The speed and power of Star Sea Beast, now that it was super, had increased by a lot. Star Sea Beast eventually came to a stop on an icy field. Everyone dismounted it at that point. Jade Little Lion made sure to examine Star Sea Beast and profusely compliment the creature. This brother can travel through objects? Wow, this is far too strong. The little ice seahorse that had followed them now looked frightened. It spun around in circles, as if it could no longer find its mother. It kept crying as if it missed its parents. They were now very far away from the seahorses, and no matter how hard it whined, its parents wouldn't hear it. Bauer jumped onto the back of the little ice seahorse, and with her fat hands, she stroked its head. Calm down. Don't be afraid. Bauer is here for you. The little ice seahorse rubbed its head into Bauer as it cried. It looked as if it had found protection now, and it didn't look as helpless as it just had. Hansen wanted to kill the little ice seahorse, but Bauer seemed to like it. This prompted him to drop the idea. I never thought the Chimenea would bear a creature like that. I wonder what it is, Jade Little Lion said. It's alive, so it cannot be the relic. Little Fairy looked annoyed. I don't know if it is the relic or not, but it would be best if we don't provoke it. The black seahorses are super creatures, but it can snare them with those chains with ease. They were completely unable to resist. The creature in the Chimenea must be strong. I don't think we can fight it, Hansan said, and then walked forward. Everyone was of the same mind. Giving up on the Chimenea, they then opted to try somewhere else. The little ice seahorse followed after Bauer. At first, the creature missed its group of seahorses, but after a while of playing with Bauer, its mood turned happy again. Han San spent the next few days traversing the ruins, but he couldn't find anything. Of course, Han San did not care too much if he did not get a reward for the current endeavors, as he was spending a lot of time practicing the skill he learned from the Destiny's Tower. Once he was done, he was going to return there with Star Sea Beast and see if he could take the treasure out of the tower with him. .com. The seven items in there had the possibility of being the relics that they were all seeking. Little Fairy and the others searched in the ruins, as well. Hansen, in the meantime, just took it for a nice trip and nothing more. He didn't expect to find anything else that was decent. One particular day, after two weeks of traveling and searching, everything seemed to be the same for Han Senator. He sat on Star Sea Beast's back and practiced the skill he was in the midst of learning. But suddenly, he felt his life door shake, and the pumping of his blood accelerated. The blood in his body wasn't being driven by his heart anymore. Its rush was sustained by the life door now, and with each fresh pump, new changes came along with it. It was a brand new cycle, and it brought changes to the way Han Sen's body operated. The changes did not just apply to his blood. The blood was simply the catalyst for everything else. Han Sen's cells and genes were undergoing direct changes. Hansen's appearance mostly did not change. All the changes were internal, save for his black eyes that became red. Aside from his eye color, though, Hansen seemed exactly the same. There were a lot of changes to his insides, however. Hansen felt as if his bones and flesh had been wholly rebuilt. His entire body actually felt much heavier, by a few multiples. And yet, his body and bones were like a bird's. His blood was not carried by vessels as it was directly entwined with his bones and flesh. These changes made Hansen's body feel far more sensitive. He was able to control himself better, and even his base power seemed to be much stronger. When Hansen looked at Star Sea Beast and Jade Little Lion, though, he was given a shock. His vision had been altered with his new red eyes. With that red vision, Hansen could see the blood that coursed through their bodies. Or at least, that was what Hansen thought at first. After a closer examination, 
Han Sen noticed it wasn't the blood he was observing. If the blood was flowing, then its course must have been dictated by the heart. But this was not what Han Sen saw. A red force was inside their bodies, just flowing, and there was a saturation depicted in different areas on them. There was no set route to the flow he was seeing. Is that their life force? Hansen guessed, although he was not sure. Han San wanted to get a closer look, but he felt a pain in his head and his body started to twitch. It was like he was getting stabbed by a number of needles. Han San stopped the skill immediately, and when he did that, the pain and needle-like sensation went away immediately. The changes in his body reverted back to how they were before he practiced the skill, and the blood began pumping from his heart, just like it used to. .com. Han San could feel his body was now rather weak, and he thought to himself, this skill costs a lot of energy. I only had it activated for a few minutes, and already my body felt as if it was on the verge of collapsing. I wonder what my strength is like when I use this transformative skill, and was the red flow I saw their life force? Hansen rested for the next half day. His body soon returned to normal, and there were no lasting effects or issues. It's time to go back to the white metal tower to collect the treasure there. Hansen had also thought of a way in which he might get Little Fairy and Jade Little Lion out of his hair for a time. He told them it would be best to split up and search separately. So, Hansen ended up just bringing Bower, Little Silver, and Little Star with him to the White Tower. The Little Ice Seahorse followed Bower, determined not to leave. As a result, Hansen had no choice but to allow him to come. Jade Little Lion was still, by all accounts, an outsider and Little Fairy could be a touch suspicious. As a result, he didn't want them to come with him. Starsea Beast brought Han San to a glacier mountain, the one that was populated by deadly flowers. Starsea Beast was super class, and casting its traveling skill no longer costed as much energy. It brought Han San right to the doorstep of the White Tower. Han San was excited, and he hastily threw the door open. He scrambled up to the top floor, and saw the seven pedestals of treasure were still intact and untouched. He breathed a sigh of relief. It looks like God's retribution really couldn't learn the skill. If he could, he would have come back here before me. Either that, or he can learn it and just hasn't finished yet, Hansen thought. Seeing the seven treasures sitting neatly on the stone pedestals, Han San cast the skill. His body engaged with all those weird changes again, and then he reached his hand out to see if he could go past the space vortex shield and grab the treasure. Hansen did this very carefully. His hand approached the prizes slowly, but when his nails brushed the end of the platform, the tips of his fingernails disappeared. Hansen's face changed. He pulled his hand back and said, This skill doesn't even let me go past the space vortex shield? Hansen had spent a lot of effort in coming here, and after all that, this was the result. It was dismal and it sent a chill running through his heart. As this happened, though, Hansen heard a loud sound come from outside. It rocked the construct itself. Then, he heard the crying noises that were all too familiar to him. Hansen's face changed. He went up to the window and pushed it open. Hansen looked down from there, and it was just as he thought. Eleven black seahorses were situated right outside Destiny's Tower. They were blocking the entrance, too. The eleven black seahorses repeatedly cried at the tower, making extremely loud screaming noises. SH asterisk T. Those black seahorses are really P asterisk said, and they even brought the Chimenea with them. If I knew they'd come after me, I wouldn't have brought the little ice seahorse. Han San thought the black seahorses had come there to rescue the small creature. The notion made him feel depressed. He didn't know when the Chimenea had begun spewing icy fire again but that's what it was now doing. The mouths of the eleven black seahorses were shaped like megaphones. They spat out frosty air at the white metal tower. SH asterisk T. Are those black seahorses that cruel? Even if I did steal your little ice seahorse, there's no need to freeze him and me together. You guys are crueler than tigers. Hansen felt depressed, and he tried to think of a way he might escape this predicament. The frosty air cropped across Destiny's tower, webbing the entirety of its metal structure. Even if Little Star used its starsea powers to escape, Han Sun thought they'd be frozen. Anyway, boom! The glaciers all around were broken by that frosty air. The peaks collapsed, and soon after, 
the cap of the white metal tower came crumbling down with them. The deadly flowers had become nothing but icicles under the force of that frosty air. The cold ruined and destroyed any powers they possessed. And soon after, the very ground began to tear and come asunder. It was like the world was ending. The eleven black seahorses and their power were too much. The wrath they unleashed could have definitely put them in the category of being berserk supercreatures. F asterisk CK. They're trying to kill me. Wait a minute. If they're using such powerful frosty air, then why don't I feel cold? Han San was shocked when he realized he didn't feel cold at all. The frosty air froze the glaciers stiff until they broke. But Han San was not feeling a thing. The frosty air might as well have not even existed. Is it so cold that my brain froze, and now I cannot feel the cold anymore? Hansen pinched himself, but he did feel pain. His skin was still silky smooth, as well. He definitely wasn't frozen. What's going on? Has the white metal tower shielded us from the black seahorse's ice spit? Amidst Hansen's shock, he asked himself this question. The white metal tower was atop an ice mountain. The eleven black seahorses had broken the mountain with their frosty air. The white tower had been falling, but now, they were no longer feeling any such movement. Han San quickly returned to the window, and what he saw surprised him. The white metal tower hadn't fallen with the mountain. It was actually hanging in midair. A hand was there, holding it aloft in the sky. It was a giant, rock-like hand, and the huge white tower was being casually held up by this hand. It wasn't taking up the entire hand, either. The tower looked like a toy that just happened to rest in its palm. Hansen followed the hand back to the arm that supported it. The hand was actually connected to a man made of rock. A giant rockman. It also just happened to be headless. The rockman was sitting between the glaciers with its hand, holding the white metal tower aloft. This was the headless rockman Hansen had seen on the first floor of the white tower. Now that rockman was shining, and the light it gave off was so bright, it obscured sight of the mountain itself. It was a godlike sort of magic. Destiny. Destiny. A really sad voice came from the rockman. It was like he was saying you could not control destiny. Destiny was full of unfairness, and it was governed by cruelty. Rockman had no head, though, so Han Sun wasn't sure where the voice was actually coming from. Regardless, it boomed like thunder. It made the blood inside his body vibrate so wildly. It felt like it was trying to break out. When Hansen looked at the eleven black seahorses and the Chiminia next, his face changed. The black seahorses and the Chiminia had somehow become gigantic. They were almost as big as the Rockmen. All the black seahorses looked like sun-class battleships. And the Chiminia looked like an entire planet. Destiny. Destiny. My life is my life. My life is my life. It does not belong to the sky. Rockman's voice sounded even crazier than it had before. It was spoken with a force that should have been enough to sunder the earth. It was like an undying warrior, filled with a zeal for murder. After all these years, do you still not understand? The Chiminia now spoke, and it was a cold voice that came from it. It was not loud, but its volume was still greater than the Rockman's. It came into Han Sin's ear without losing a single word. That voice was unisex, too. Hansen couldn't determine whether or not it was the voice of a woman or a man. But what Hansen could tell was that it was the creature with the armor that was speaking. I won't understand, even in death. The rockman had a very loud and angry voice. Its other hand, which was like a mountain, came towards the eleven black seahorses and the chiminia. It felt as if the ground was breaking when that big hand moved. Wherever the big hand went, the entire dimension was cracked. It felt like the whole world could be crushed below its might. Whenever it struck, the eleven black seahorses were screaming at it angrily. The megaphone lips that were like the gun emplacements on a sun-class battleship spat out frosty air. Their force was enough to impede and stop the movement of the stone hand. That scary, frosty air made its hand freeze in place. The creatures then generated more ice to encase it inside. You are dead. You should understand that. The Chiminia spoke again with an even colder voice. I won't. Even if I die. The rockman sounded very sad, and he continued pushing down. The ice that encased his hand was broken and cast away, and the hand resumed its advance. 
It was going to break the heads of the eleven black seahorses. Pop! The eleven black seahorses spilled blood and fell back. Even they could not withstand the rockman's power. Let it burn to dust. With that cold voice, the Chimenea's grate was opened. The ice fire came out, and it began to rapidly approach the body of the rockman. Han San now knew that neither the rockman nor the black seahorses were coming after him. Still, witnessing such wrathful power was very frightening. Han San had simply come there for treasure. He didn't expect to encounter such bad luck and stumble into the crossfire of two bosses fighting. Compared to the Chimenea and Rockman, Han Sen's power was like a small river running into the sea. He was not very effective by comparison. Seeing the ice flames come like a river, Han San was worried that the tower would be completely destroyed. The Rockman's hand that held the tower moved, and the tower flew through the air. It was going towards the airborne fire. And then, Han San saw the frost get absorbed and nullified by the body of the white metal tower. It sucked it up clean. Han Sen's face looked ill. There was a lot of icy fire getting absorbed by the tower, and if the interior filled up, the people inside would not fare well. But Han Sen's fear of this did not materialize. The icy flames that were absorbed by the tower did not actually manifest on the interior. No fire appeared on the inside, threatening him. But on the top floor of the tower, another pedestal appeared. There was an ice flame on it, like a frosty flower rolling around. Now Han San understood where the other seven items had come from. They were not placed there as treasure by those who constructed the tower. They were actually items that had been absorbed and claimed by the tower from others. Slash. These guys are too scary. I need to find a way to escape from here. Han Sen looked outside the tower and tried to think of a way in which he might make it away. The ice flame hadn't hurt them this time, but who knew what might happen as the fight dragged on. It would be best if they left as soon as they were able to. The situation outside made Han Sun want to avoid unnecessary risks, however. When the ice flames were absorbed by the tower, the tower was headed directly for the Chimenea. It looked as if it was going to crush it. Sheom. The ice flames inside the Chimenea had dispersed, but Han Sun wasn't sure if the fires were put out by the Chimenea's own volition or if they had just been stolen. A creature with black armor then emerged from the Chimenea. It grabbed the metal tower headed for it and lifted it up. The tower was shining amidst that deflective power, and the creature was unable to crush the little thing. The headless rockman was pressing down on the top of the tower, and his scary might was forcing it down. As he did this, the black armored creature pushed up from below. Those two frightening forces were pushing and pulling with unimaginable force. The shockwaves generated came from the center of the tower, and the glaciers near them all broke. Chunks of ice were sent flying everywhere, and it created a terrifying scene. Hansen and Bauer were not having a good time. The tower had absorbed a lot of power, but it was unable to block it all. The rockman's power and the black armored foe's power were seeping into the interior of the tower. The rockman's power was like blood, though, and Han Sun thought it seemed rather familiar. He eventually realized it was the skill he had learned from inside this same tower. Does this headless rockman have a relationship to human emperor? Or is he himself human emperor? Hansen had a lot to think about. The black armor foe's power was very weird. It was a power that included both ice and fire and combined them. Hansen could not tell where the power came from, but it was extremely strong. When those powers entered the tower, no damage was dealt to the interior. The powers did, however, cause a lot of trouble for Han Sen. Inside the tower, it was suddenly cold and hot at the same time, and the blood power from the rockmen made their blood flow inversely. It felt as if the blood was going to gush out from their bodies. Little Silver and Starsea Beast did their best to resist both of those powers, but it wasn't going well. Their life forces were messed up, and there was a chance it could trigger a self rock combustion. Han Sen summoned his god Gino Core and his bloodlust Ant King to fight back that wretched combination of power. Sheom. The headless rockman and the black armor foe were still engaged in combat, but neither of them seemed to be the dominant force. They were both locked against each other. When Han Sen looked back outside, having the tower for shelter was far better than the surrounding region. The power outside was far too scary and it made them realize there'd be no hope of escaping if they were to set foot outside the tower. But Hansen, 
Feeling that power leak inside, thought to himself, I practice the skill of the tower, so maybe I can use my power to control the blood power that is trying to invade here. If I can control that power, I don't have to deal with both of their powers. I'd only have to deal with the ice and fire. Han San cast the skill he had learned from the tower. He used the Blood Pulse Sutra, and then his body went into a strange mode of operation. Han Sen triggered the secret skill, but it didn't allow him to immediately control the blood power just yet. He felt like the blood power would eventually come, though, like it had been searching for a host. Using this skill cost a lot of energy, however, and Han Sen knew he wouldn't be able to last long with it. But when the blood power began to seep inside of him, he felt a lot more awake. He no longer felt tired, and the headache and twitchy feelings vanished. When the blood power was inside him, it was refined by the skill he was casting. It moisturized his transformed body, and the flesh and bones changed even more. As more and more of that blood power was refined, Han San started to feel some weird connection between him and the tower. He could feel the pulse of the tower, like his blood was connected to the construct. Of course, it was just a feeling more than anything. He couldn't physically control the tower. As the fight went on, Han Sin felt the treasures on the pedestals start to get corroded by the weird power. They all started to fade, even that ice flame. The treasures on the rocks were melting, and a god light from the pedestals began to shine and illuminate the tower. The light melted into the construct itself. It made the tower shine brighter, and the strength it possessed increased. Are you really this stubborn in your refusal to understand? The black armor foe said. The headless man of stone looked sad. If understanding is my destiny, then I will forever forsake the need to understand. Then you will disappear. After that cold voice spoke again, the black armor foe threw a punch towards the bottom of the tower. And then, the entire tower went flying through the air. The rockman's hand that was holding the tower had been cleaved through, and his entire body went stumbling back. The black armor foe created another flame and he used it to forge an ice fire sword. With it, he slashed towards the rockman. The sword flame was terrifying to witness, and the tower was now like the ceiling of the sky. Han San saw the explosions erupting outside, and it genuinely felt like the earth was collapsing. He almost couldn't see what was going on. The treasures on the pedestals had all melted into the tower at this point, and you could hear the weaponry hit the construct. Every impact made the tower's power even more messed up. The tower shook violently, like a magnitude 10 earthquake. Even Han Sun could not control his body. Silver Fox, Little Star, and Little Ice Seahorse were rolling around the interior nonstop. Han Sin held Bower tight to his chest, not wanting her to suffer a hit. He cast the secret skill to absorb more of the tower's blood power so his companions did not have to endure it. Then, they would only have to deal with the ice and fire. Fortunately, the metal tower was firmly built. Even after all those horrible impacts, it was solid and had not been broken. Only a small amount of that power was able to seep through, and it was enough for them all to withstand. After what felt like a century to Han Sin, he heard a giant rumbling noise. Han Sin's entire body bounced up, hitting the top of the tower, and then fell back to the floor. After that, things went back to normal. The metal tower stopped shaking, the energy suffusing the tower vanished, and everything was quiet. Is it finished? Who won? Hansen climbed up from the floor, shook his head, and looked around. Little Silver, Little Star, are you both okay? Little Silver, Little Star, and that little ice seahorse all climbed up from the ground, shaking their heads and bodies, looking dizzy. Fortunately, none of them were injured. Though their forces were a bit weaker, nothing appeared to be seriously wrong with them. Hansen was relieved seeing them all okay. He then ran to the tower window and looked outside, and he was shocked by what he saw. The tower was now submerged in water, as if it were in an aquarium. Many sea creatures were visible through the window, swimming around them. Hansen reached out his hands, and what he touched was indeed water. He looked up, and there was something that looked like blurry clouds above them. There were many strange cracks in the surface of the blurry clouds. Hansen took a serious look, and then he realized what had happened. The metal tower had cracked the ice and sunk into the ocean, and now they were at the bottom of the sea. 
Quite a few marine creatures were visible, but he couldn't see the rockmen or the black armor foe anywhere he looked. The marine creatures only had mutant life forces at best, so they were not a threat to Han Senator Han San decided to venture out of the tower. Han San swam toward the cracks in the ice, and after he reached the surface, he found himself surrounded by icebergs and unable to see the mountains anymore. Are we not in God's ruin anymore? Hansen looked around, but he couldn't feel that strange power around him anymore, which meant he was no longer in God's ruin. The headless rockman and the black armor foe had been fighting for such a long time that their access to God's ruin had closed. Hansen looked around, but he couldn't see the headless rockman or the black armor foe, and neither could he sense the power ripples around him, so he dived back towards the metal tower in the ocean. Little Silver looked much better, and the others had also regained consciousness. Little Silver was healing the little ice seahorse's injuries using his lightning. As for Little Star, it had already reached super level, so it had a much stronger body and wasn't injured very badly. Han Sun ran down to the first floor, but he couldn't find that headless stone figure. As for the metal tower, its first floor was completely empty. Aside from the technique inscribed on the walls, nothing was left. Just as I expected, the headless rockman was the headless stone figure in the tower, Han Sen thought. Where did he go, I wonder? Can I control the metal now? Despite having been used to fight that horrifying black armor foe for so long, the metal tower was so sturdy that it wasn't damaged. It was definitely a top-tier item. During the fight, Han Sen had sensed that he was somehow connected to the metal tower, so he wondered if it would be possible for him to claim the metal tower for his own. However, he couldn't sense the connection between him and the metal tower anymore. Han Sen hesitated, and then he used his techniques again, letting his body enter that strange state. As he did so, he immediately felt the bizarre connection between him and the metal tower. It was stronger than before. Hansen had tried to control the metal tower while the headless rockman and the black armor foe were fighting, but he hadn't been successful. Now that the headless rockman was gone, however, there was a chance that he might succeed. Hansen was just giving a shot. He might be able to bring the metal tower under his control if things went well, and even if he couldn't do it, he would lose nothing by trying. Hansen moved his thoughts, and the metal tower immediately started to shake making rumbling noises as if it were falling down. Han San quickly got out of the metal tower with Little Silver and the others, then turned to look back at the metal tower. The tower shook and began to shrink quickly, and after only a short while, it reduced to the size of a man's palm. The power inside Han Sen's body was flowing, and the tower shot into his sea of soul. At the same time, there was a familiar voice echoing beside Han Sen's ears, which exhilarated him, Emperor Gino Core Godly Tower gained. Emperor Gino Core. It's indeed a top tier item. Hansen didn't know the exact differences between Emperor Gino Cores and Super Gino Cores, but he knew that emperors should correspond to berserk super creatures, so Emperor Cores would be more powerful than Super Cores. Just as he was about to summon the Godly Tower to check its power, Hansen felt a strong headache and his body began to twitch. He had to deactivate the skill and return his body to its normal state first. However, after deactivating the skill and trying to summon the godly tower, he found that he couldn't connect to it anymore. The tower was slumbering in his sea of soul like a dead object. Can I only utilize the godly tower while I'm transformed? Han Sen was a little bummed. If he could only summon the godly tower while he had that weird skill running, then he would only be able to use it for a short period of time. Hansen took Bauer and the others to swim out of the ocean and return to the icebergs. He wanted to figure out where they were, but they were surrounded by icebergs and ocean, and he couldn't see a single ice mountain. Apparently, they were already far from God's ruin. Since Hansen had no idea where they were, he needed to pick a direction to travel. He picked south. Little Star was carrying all of them, which allowed them to move quickly and with little effort, and with little silver present, most creatures wouldn't dare to get close to them. After only a few days, they had stepped out of the ice zone. Everything around them looked strange, and Hansen had no idea where they were. Hansen had to ask Little Star to keep heading south, and after only 10 miles, he heard people fighting somewhere in front of them. Umans. Hansen smiled as he listened to the noises. That yelling could only come from humans. 
Han Sin took Little Silver and walked forward. If they were really humans, he could at least ask them where he was. After climbing through some mountains, he saw several humans encircling a mutant creature. Amazingly, he knew one of the humans. However, the group wasn't doing well. Although the humans were working together to fight the mutant creature, it was still crushing them. They could barely maintain their formation. The leader of those humans seemed to be Iron Fist Joshur Dao. When Hansen joined the Demigod Association, he had come into conflict with Joshur Dao, and it ended pretty badly. I can't believe I'm so unlucky. I've finally run into some humans, yet I'm at odds with one of them. Why do I keep running into people I don't want to see? Hansen tweaked. Joshur Dao was powerful. He had an iron fist glove on his right hand, which seemed to be his Geno core. Each strike from that fist left a scar across the scales of that mutant creature. As for his companions, they were relatively weak. They weren't strong enough to break the creature's scales. When they hit the mutant creature with their blades, they were basically just scratching its back. That mutant creature looked bizarre. Its body looked like a turtle's, but it didn't have a shell. Instead, it was covered by thick scales. Jia Shurdao seemed to have a gemstone geno core, and when his glove hit the creature, it slashed the scales half a foot deep. Each impact left behind visible flesh and seeping blood. That mutant creature was attacking the humans savagely, damaging the formation that Jia Shurdao and the others were trying to maintain. The creature was relatively slow, so it wasn't a deadly threat, but it looked ferocious. Hi all. Need some help? Hansen moved closer to them, bringing Little Silver and the others with him, but he didn't help them immediately. The fight was still ongoing. He didn't get along with Jia Shurdao well, so if he made a move, they might think that he was trying to steal their kill. Please do, my friend. Jia Shurdao and the others were overjoyed. They were having a hard time fighting the mutant creature as they couldn't injure it severely, and they were quickly becoming exhausted. They might not even survive the battle. It would be great if someone could help them now. Yet Jia Shurdao was dazed when he turned his head and saw Han Sen. After getting a confirmation, Han Sen didn't hesitate. He immediately summoned his split blade Geno core. He moved his body and instantly arrived beside the mutant creature, cutting through it. The mutant creature and its thick scales were sliced in half like a piece of tofu. Jia Shurdao and the others were shocked. They stared at the dead mutant creature. That mutant creature was called Cho Shell Beast, and it had powerful defenses even among the sacred blood creatures. Yet Hansen had cut the creature in half with a single strike. Even Jia Shurdao was stunned by that. Sacred blood creature Cho Shell Beast killed. Beast soul gained. Geno core unobtained. Eat the flesh to gain zero to ten sacred Geno points randomly. Hansen hadn't expected to get the beast soul, which thrilled him. Slashing Blade was a Super Geno core, and it was one of the most destructive Super Geno cores. It could kill a Sacred Blood creature easily, and it was a happy surprise for him to get a Sacred Blood Beast Soul as well. It's been a long time, Mr. Jia, said Han Sin, looking at Jia Shurdao. Jia Shurdao forced a smile and said, It has indeed been a long time, Brother Han. Your power has improved so much. It was so easy for you to kill a Cho Shell Beast. You must be at the Super level already. It's not that easy to get super genes. My sacred geno points are just maxed already, and I was lucky enough to get a highly destructive geno core, said Hansen, smiling. Others also went up to Hansen and talked to him. They were all experienced demigods, and Hansen had heard of them all. However, other than Jia Shurdao, Hansen hadn't met any of them. They were more joyful after realizing that Hansen didn't want the flesh and blood of the Cho Shell beast. They relaxed and they answered all the questions Hansen had in detail. Hansen wasn't amused to find out where he was now. There was a human shelter nearby, which was where Jia Shurdao and the others all lived. It was one of the few top-tier shelters owned by humans. However, Hansen didn't want to see the owner of that shelter. Though many more humans had become demigods over the last decade, Luo Haidang still stood far above the rest. The shelter Jia Shurdao and his friends were staying at was known as Godslayer Shelter and it was ruled by Luo Haidang. Han Sen was a little hesitant about the idea of entering Godslayer Shelter. It wasn't entirely Luo Haitong's fault that Han Sen's mom left the Luo family, so Han Sen didn't have any specific animosity toward Luo Haitang for that. However, 
Luo Haiteng had tricked Han Yin into practicing the falsified Sky Sutra, which deeply upset Han San, so he had a very bad impression of Luo Haiteng and his family. If Luo Haiteng ran into trouble, the Luo family would ask Han Yin, who was just a girl, to fulfill their family oath. That oath was a promise passed from generation to generation, and it required one of their family members to fight Ashura every ten years. It was a family curse, which was forced upon Han Yin by Luo Haiteng, which was the main reason why Han Sen had a grudge against Luo Haiteng and his family. Han Sen, your great-grandfather Mr. Luo is in the shelter now. Do you want us to take you to see him? Asked Lu Che, one of the demigods. Han Sen hesitated, but he shook his head and said, No need. I still have something else to do. Finishing that, Han Sen planned to leave. He now had some idea of where he was, so it would be easy for him to get back to God's ruin. The fairy was still in God's ruin, and Han Sen needed to go back and take his share of the profits from the Godlight Tunnel. He planned to get back to God's ruin and check if Jade, the little Lion King, and the fairy were still there. Jia Shirdao hesitated, then called to Han Sen, Brother Han, please hold on for a minute. What else do you want? Han Sen asked, stopping and looking at Jia Shirdao. Jia Shirdao clenched his teeth, forced another smile and said, Brother Han, I have some business to discuss with you. Are you interested? What business? Han Sen looked at Jia Shirdao, confused. It's about killing a super creature. I've found some opportunities that we can kill super creatures, but I'm not strong enough to break their bodies. However, with the power of your Geno Core, you might have a chance, said Jia Shirdao. What's a super sacred creature? Han Sen was interested. He was definitely interested in killing some super creatures to get their life geno essences. Han Sen had only gained control of one life geno essence, which belonged to that dog. As for the others, he hadn't had time to absorb them. It's kind of complicated. Let's go back to the shelter where we can talk. I can guarantee that you'll be interested in it, said Jia Shirdao. Hansen hesitated, but he still followed Jia Shirdao back to Godslayer Shelter. According to Jia Shirdao, there wasn't only one super creature. Instead, there was a group of them. Also, if someone had enough power to break the skin and flesh of those super creatures, it would be easy to kill them all. Even Han San was interested in that, so he wanted to learn more. Though there were some conflicts between him and Jia Shirdao, they were small issues that could be set aside when both of them had proper motivation. Though Han Sian didn't particularly want to see members of the Luo family, he wasn't scared of meeting them. Godslayer shelter was enormous, and chances were good that it was a super shelter. However, only a small number of the members were humans, while the vast majority of them were creatures and spirits. That was normal. After all, there was only a small number of humans in the fourth god's sanctuary. So even in shelters belonging to humans, humans were a minority. Just as Han San and Jia Shirdao entered the shelter and began walking towards Jia Shirdao's house, Han San saw a couple of humans walking towards him. One of them was Luo Li. Luo Li wasn't really Luolan's sister, but Han San still needed to call her aunt. A long time ago, Luo Li went to Han San and asked him to practice the falsified Sky Sutra, but Han San didn't know that the woman was his aunt until his mother told him. Luo Li was talking to two men as she walked out of the shelter. Two men followed Luo Li's gaze and saw Han Senator. They didn't seem to recognize Han Sen. Who is this? Jia Shirdao. Is he a new demigod? said one of the men. Despite the fact that he was speaking to an experienced demigod like Jia Shirdao, the man was aloof and casual. Jia Shirdao smiled and said, This is actually a relative of yours. Don't you know him? Relative? The Luo family doesn't have any relatives, Luo Yu said, curling his lips and as if disgusted with what Jia Shirdao had just said. Because of the power of Godslayer Luo, the Luo family had never actually cared about the ordinary people of the Alliance. They didn't even respect other demigods. After all, many demigods in Godslayer Shelter were under the protection of the Luos, so almost all the demigods venerated those of Luo family, and after a long time, the Luos had become filled with pride. That pride had been injured twice before. One time was when Luo Haiteng chose Han San as his heir, and the other was when he chose Han Yin as his heir. They were crushed by that. Though the Luo family wasn't large, there were plenty of members in the sanctuaries. The fact that Luo Haiteng had chosen someone outside the family instead of them deeply frustrated them, 
and they felt wronged by the Han family. However, because of their pride, they deliberately showed disdain to the Hans, and they didn't even seem to care about Han San and Han Yen. They even tried to avoid hearing news of them, just like someone would switch channels if they saw someone they hated on TV. In truth, there were only a few families in the alliance that the Luos actually paid attention to. That's right. Han Sen's mother is Luo Lan. You guys are uncles of Han Sen, said Jia Shi Dao. Both Luo Yu and Luo Hui were dismayed hearing the names Han Sen and Luo Lan. In the Luo family, these two names were taboos. Your Han Senator, it's impressive that you became a demigod by yourself at such a young age, but you didn't follow the correct path, so you'll never make it to the top, said Luo Yu coldly. Is this guy mental? Han Sen frowned. He'd never met Luo Yu before, but the man was being incredibly impolite for no reason. Little did Hansen know, many people in the Luo family had wanted to succeed Luo Haitang, yet Luo Haitang had picked Han San instead. What's worse, Han Sin hadn't given A.D. asterisk M in about the falsified Sky Sutra, which upset the Luos. From the perspective of the Luos, they were the most powerful family in the alliance. So the falsified Sky Sutra had to be the strongest technique. How Han Sen behaved was both ignorant and laughable. What correct path, said Han Sen, looking at Luo Yu. He had something of a grudge against the Luos as well, so he wouldn't just let this matter go. Luo Yu sneered. It's useless to talk to stupid people. Finishing that, Luo Yu walked by Han Sen, completely ignoring him. Is there something wrong with him? Han Sen asked with a frown. Luo Yu had been incredibly annoying. Let's go back and talk. Jia Shirdao originally thought that the Hans were close to the Luos, which was why he introduced them to each other. He hadn't expected the whole thing to turn out so awkwardly, so he changed the topic quickly. Luo Yu and Luo Hui both walked away. Luo Li looked at Han Sen without saying anything. She wasn't a real member of the Luo family, as she was adopted. Though she also had some of the Luo pride, she wasn't as arrogant as Luo Yu. And because of Luo Lan, Luo Li paid extra attention to the Hans, so she knew much more about Han Sen than Luo Yu did. She knew that Han Sen was actually an incredible person, and Luo Yu couldn't begin to compare with him. However, she belonged to the Luo family after all, so she shouldn't say much to Han Sen, who had been scorned by the Luos. Luo Li continued walking with Luo Yu, but she found an excuse to leave soon after. She went to the place where Luo Haiting lived and told him that Hansen had arrived at Godslayer Shelter. Hansen followed Jia Shirdao to where he lived. Jia Shirdao explained his proposal to Hansen. Jia Shirdao had discovered a special kind of super creature. These super creatures couldn't move themselves, but they had exceptional defenses. It was difficult for Jia Shirdao and the others to injure mere sacred blood creatures, so it was impossible for them to kill that kind of super creature. After seeing Han Sen's incredible attack power, he had decided to invite Han Sen back as he wanted to collaborate with Han Sun to kill those creatures. Han Sen didn't ask where those super creatures were. Instead, he asked about their basic characteristics. Han Sen frowned, then repeated what Jia Shirdao had just said. They are born on the ground, and they have a narrow attack range, so they can just stand there and be hit. Super creatures like that really exist? They're real. I saw them with my own eyes. I'm the only one who knows that place. If you're willing to cooperate with me, I'll take you there in the near future. Jia Shirdao pointed at the sky with his fingers and swore. Why are we doing this in the near future instead of now? asked Han Sen. Jia Shirdao answered, I've talked about this with the Luos, but I haven't reached an agreement with them yet. It might take a little time, but you can relax. After I've reached a deal with the Luos, I'll definitely count you in. Hansen immediately knew what Jia Shirdao meant. Jia Shirdao himself wasn't able to kill those super creatures, so he wanted to cooperate with the Luos, but he was afraid that the Luos would betray him. Now that Hansen had come, he wanted to use Han Sun to balance the Luos. That would be to Jia Shirdao's benefit, or at least, it might keep him from being exploited by either party. It was possible that Jia Shirdao had arranged for Hansen and Luo Yu to run into each other. He might have wanted to see firsthand whether the relationship between Han San and the Luos was really that bad. Though Jia Shirdao has a good plan, the Luos are too tyrannical to give him this chance. He might need to make a choice between us after all. Hansen didn't say it out loud. Instead, 
He agreed that he would stay in Godslayer shelter for a couple of days to wait for Jia Shirdao's news. Han Sin made good use of the time, absorbing the rest of his life geno essences. Now, his super gene count had already reached 26 points, and his body was greatly improved. Han Sin then went back to the Alliance and told his family that he was okay. After only a couple of days, Jia Shirdao went to Han Sin again, and he smiled and said, Brother Han, I'm really worried. Luo, you heard that you're joining, and now there's no way that he will go along with it, no matter what I say. This place belongs to the Luos, so I don't know what to do. Hansen wasn't very concerned about what Jia Shirdao had said. Apparently, Jia Shirdao had chosen to side with the Luos over him. Then I'll just wish you all good luck, Hansen said, then left. Old Jia, are you really cooperating with the Luos? A demigod following Jia Shirdao asked him after Hansen left. I just didn't expect the relationship between the Luos and Han Sin to be this bad. If Han Sin joins, Luo Yu and the others will quit completely. If I have to choose between them, I think the Luos are more reliable, so that's the only decision I can make, said Jia Shirdao. Why didn't you choose Han Sin? He is incredibly powerful, and he's only one person, so we wouldn't have to share as much of the profits, said the demigod, confused. Jia Shirdao shook his head and said, we know that Han Sen is powerful, but we don't know exactly how powerful. We all know the strength of the Luos, though. Besides, Han Sen hasn't practiced the falsified Sky Sutra. We're already depending on the Luos for our survival, so it's better if we side with them. After Han Sen left Jia Shirdao's house, he intended to leave Godslayer Shelter. He had just been trying his luck. Now that the deal had fallen through, he found no reason to stay here any longer. However, before Han Sen could reach the gate of the shelter, he saw Luo Li standing near him. The Godslayer wants to see you, said Luo Li, directly. I don't want to see him. Han Sen wasn't very fond of Luo Haidang, so he rejected Luo Li directly. He walked around her, leaving Godslayer shelter. He wants to talk about Han Yin. What Luo Li said stopped Han Sen. There's nothing to talk about. Don't think you can drag little Yin down just because she's practiced the falsified Sky Sutra. Her last name is Han, not Luo, said Han Sin, dismayed. It's useless for you to say anything to me. You can just talk about it to the Godslayer, or are you scared? said Luo Li. Okay, I'll go to him and talk. Han Sen knew that Luo Li was provoking him, but what she said did make sense. Also, he was powerful enough to talk with Luo Haidang. Han Sin wouldn't involve Han Yin in that endless vicious cycle, no matter what. That was an abyss, and if she was trapped in it, she'd never get out. Han Sin would rather die than let something like that happen to his sister. Please. Luo Li made a gesture and started to lead the way. Han Sin followed Luo Li all the way to a room in the shelter. Han Sen thought that the place where Luo Haiting lived would be exquisite, if not luxurious, yet he was shocked when he saw the residence. Luo Haitong's home was very frugal. It was so simple that it only had a bed, a desk, and a chair. Other than that, the entire room was bare. Luo Haitang had come to see Han once, when an accident in the sanctuary had left Han San gravely injured. Now, Luo Haitang looked exactly the same as he had then. Luo Haitang was sitting behind the desk, looking at Han Senator the legendary godslayer Luo, who had roamed the sanctuaries as he pleased, looked like an ordinary middle-aged man. He wasn't aggressive at all. He looked at Han Sen peacefully. Don't even think about exploiting little Yin. She's a Han, not a Luo. You have no right to make her fight for your family, Han Sen said straightforwardly. Luo Haiting wasn't upset. He waved his hand. Then Luo Li left the room, closing the door behind her. Han Sen opened his mouth to say something, but Luo Haiting spoke first. I'm dying. Han San was shocked for a moment. He looked carefully at Luo Haitang, but he found that Luo Haitang was still quite lively, and there was no sign of him withering away. The power inside him was still terrific. He didn't look like someone who was going to die at all. Do you really think you can trick little Yin into fighting for you? Your life is the business of your family, and it has nothing to do with mine, Han San said apathetically. Luo Haitang sighed. If there was actually someone useful in my family, I wouldn't have gone to you too, and I wouldn't have used the methods that I did. Luo Haiting paused for a short while and went on to say, As long as I'm alive, 
I won't let you juniors carry such a fate, but I am truly dying, and I only have five years left to live. The next battle against the Jade Shura will happen in six years, but I won't make it that long. I can only ask Han Yin to take over the fight. That's the only chance we have of surviving. Again, that's your concern, which has nothing to do with us. Let me repeat myself. There's no way that little Yin will help you Luo's fight, said Han Sin, coldly. Luo Haiting shook his head. She's practiced the real falsified Sky Sutra. Even if she's not going, the Jade Shura will look for her. Hansen thought, then you're just playing us. You're the renowned God Slayer Luo, and you're my great-grandfather. Hansen didn't say that out loud. After all, the old man was one of Han Sin's seniors. Before Han Sin said anything, Luo Haiteng continued, though I don't want to admit it, the truth is that the Jade Shura, who have much more Shura blood, are much better at practicing the falsified Sky Sutra. In order to win against the Jade Shura, I have to resort to some special methods, which quickly burns away my life. No matter how hard I try, I won't last another five years. I don't have a choice, so I have to find someone to take over my position. After pausing for a short while, Luo Haiteng said, I'm not saying this to make you empathize with me. I'm just telling you exactly what's happening, and I want you to know that it's true for Han Yin too. If you really care about her, you should help her win the battle she's going to engage in six years from now. I've told you that I won't let Han Yin fight for your family. That's not her destiny. Though Han San was surprised that Luo Haiteng might actually die in the near future, he wasn't willing to compromise on the issue of Han Yin. Luo Haiteng looked at Han San as if he were looking at a spoiled brat. He smiled and asked, Then what are you planning to do? They want the falsified Sky Sutra, right? I'll just give it to them, said Han San. Luo Haiteng shook his head mildly. Even if you gave it to them, the Jade Shura wouldn't let you go easily. Do you really think they'll allow someone else to know the falsified Sky Sutra? Even if you give it to them, they'll also try to kill Han Yen. Even those who have been exposed to the falsified Sky Sutra, like your mother, might be hunted down. Then I'll kill them all, said Han Sin. Luo Haiting stopped defending himself. Instead, he said, Don't you think the term Jade Shura sounds a bit familiar? What do you mean? Hansen asked, Confused. Luo Haiteng shook his head and continued, The Empress of the Shura race is named Jade Shura. Do you think this is only a coincidence? The Shura Empress is the Jade Shura of this generation? Hansen looked dased. Though he also thought it was weird that the names of these two were so similar, he hadn't expected the Shura Empress to be a descendant of the Jade Shura. The Shura had a much stronger emphasis on bloodline than humans and Jade Shura had been a human. He procreated with the Shura race at first, but afterward his descendants procreated with humans, so the Jade Shura only had a tiny portion of Shura genes. It was shocking to Han San that one of them could actually become an Empress of the Shura. Luo Haiteng nodded. The Empress is the descendant of Jade Shura in this generation, and she's the most powerful descendant. Though she's only practiced half the falsified Sky Sutra, I could barely win against her in the last battle and her power is still growing. Even if, against all odds, I'm still alive in five years, there's a good chance that I might be defeated by her. Luo Haiteng took out a chip and a journal, giving them to Han Sr. This is the record of the battles between me and the Jade Shura, and some of the techniques I developed that go with the falsified Sky Sutra. I hope you can give them to Little Yin. She must win the battle in six years. If she loses, not only my family will be D asterisk Ned, but the entire alliance will be as well. I can't imagine the power of a Jade Shura who had practiced the entire falsified Sky Sutra. Han Sin didn't take the chip or the journal. He said calmly, Han Yin is my sister, so I'll be the one who teaches her. You don't need to worry about it. I'll say it one last time. Don't go disturb my sister. I'll kill anyone who does, whether that's you or the Jade Shura. Han Sin prepared to leave. Young man, you're being too stubborn. You're behaving just like Lon Air, rebellious and unwilling to listen to others' opinions, said Luo Haideng. Have you ever thought that your recklessness might cost Little Yan's life, and even your mother's? Luo Haideng saw that Han San still didn't want to listen. He sighed. If I had any other options, I wouldn't have chosen you guys. Even if my family is destroyed, you guys can still live happily and peacefully, but the fact is, 
Lan Air has also practiced the falsified Sky Sutra. Even if the Luos are annihilated, Jade Shura won't let her go easily. You were born in the wrong family, so whether I force you or not, the Jade Shura will come for you sooner or later. Just take it, son. This is the hope of my family, and also the hope of your family. Luo Haiteng gave Hansen the chip and the journal. Hansen looked at Luo Haiteng. The legendary godslayer Luo seemed like a dying old man. Though he didn't look old from the outside, he was indeed old inside. Out of nowhere, Hansen felt pity for Luo Haiteng. He sighed. What did you do? Why do you only have five years left to live? You still look pretty spry to me, and you don't seem to have any internal injuries. Luo Haiteng said, my potential in the Luo family is definitely at pinnacle level, but compared to those from the Jade Shura, my falsified Sky Sutra is weak. The blood of the Shura determines much of the power of the falsified Sky Sutra, and to win over the Jade Shura, I resorted to something that no human being has ever tried before. I practiced Shura change as a mere human being. The Shura genes in my family are almost negligible, and with that tiny remaining bloodline, I started to practice Shura change as a human being. Luckily, the benefits were beyond my imagination. My power was much greater than that of ordinary human beings after that. Luo Haiteng looked kind of smug. That power combined with the falsified Sky Sutra made me invincible in the shelter, but at the same time, I lost the ability to gain power from the shelter. I can use the flesh of creatures to strengthen my own body, but I can't manipulate spirit genes like you do or gain their powers. The only thing I can use is the power of my body and power of falsified sky, but those two combined are enough for me to fight the most powerful creatures. There are only a few humans or creatures that can actually rival me. However, that kind of power has also overexploited my body. You can feel that I have much more energy than other human beings. I'm like a balloon that has been blown too big. Though it looks sturdy, it might explode at any time. I'm trying to suppress the power but it's still surging. In five years, or even three to four years, I won't be able to suppress the power anymore, said Luo Haiteng. Hansen observed Luo Haiteng carefully with his Dongxian aura, and he indeed found something unusual. Luo Haiteng's life force was indeed powerful, but it was too much. That kind of power was like a bonfire burning hard. The greater the fire was, the more quickly the body would be burned out. Luo Haitong's life force was still terrifically strong even under his suppression, though it was getting out of his control. Hansen now believed much more of what the man had just said. I've also included the method for practicing Shura change, but I've already changed it a little bit. It isn't as powerful as the version I practice, but thankfully, it does almost no damage to your body. Luo Haitong continued after pausing for a second. If Han Yin can improve her power to the level of the Jade Shura over the next several years, then she won't need this thing. But if she can't, then it will be better to take some damage than to lose the competition and lose lives. As he spoke, Luo Haiteng tried to give the chip and the journal to Han San again. Han San didn't take it. He looked at Luo Haiteng and said, I can understand your reasoning, but I still don't need this. Don't be so stubborn, son. It has to do with the lives of your mother and sister. You have to compromise sometimes, no matter who you are. Hansen shook his head. I've told you that little Yin is from my family. I'll teach her myself, and as for this stuff, it belongs to your family. I don't need the stuff from your family. Besides, you're already dying inside. Something written by someone who's dying inside will only hurt little Yin if she reads it. Luo Haiting smiled, but he looked more solemn. He stared at Han San and said, it seems I should show you the true power of a falsified god. Then you'll change your mind. I'm not really a stubborn guy, but there's no bargaining on this issue. I'll never change my mind, said Hansen firmly. Just read it first. Luo Haiteng felt that he had wronged Luo Lan and Han Yin, which was why he was being very gentle when he was talking to Han Senator. Even Luo Haitong's immediate family hadn't seen him so good tempered before. Even so, Luo Haiteng wanted to teach Han San something but he didn't want to do the young man harm. The more he looked at Hansen, the more the young man seemed like Luo Lan. It was more in their attitudes than their appearances. Once they'd made up their mind, nobody could change it. Others might hit a dead end and come back, but Luo Lan wouldn't turn aside even if she ran into a brick wall. Hansen's attitude reminded Luo Haiteng of Luo Lan. That Lan heir, 
who he always scolded but always kept by his side. Luo Haiteng waved his hand and slapped toward Han Sen's shoulders, and that strike contained the power of falsified sky. Unlike Han Yan's falsified sky power, Luo Haitong's falsified sky power was already merged with his entire body, so it didn't seem unbalanced. It was only an ordinary slap, the way friends might slap each other on the shoulders. Han Sen suddenly looked solemn. Luo Haiteng was as powerful as any super creature being in the fourth god sanctuary. To Han Sin, that simple slap seemed to bear the weight of endless karma, and that palm was destined to fall on his shoulder. Even deities wouldn't be able to change anything. All of a sudden, Han Sin ran the Dongxian Sutra as hard as it would go, and he isolated his entire body from everything around him, and he tried to cast out every molecule that didn't belong to him. Even so, Han Sin could still feel that Luo Haitong's palm might fall onto his shoulders at any second. Incredible. The force from the Dongxian Sutra easily broke the falsified sky power from Luo Li, but it's almost useless against Luo Haiteng. No wonder he's called God Slayer Luo. Han Sun was amazed. The aura from his body was operating fast, breaking the threshold. All of a sudden, the entire world looked completely different to Han San. The maximum power of the Dongxian Sutra was called covering the sky with one hand, but it wasn't only a technique of the hand. With one step, the chain of order attached to Han San crumbled. Han Sen took a step back from Luo Haitong's palm, which stunned the old man. His palm froze in the sky, and he couldn't say anything. Goodbye. Han Sen took a bow, then he turned around and left. He had finally seen the real falsified sky sutra, and he finally saw the true power of Luo Haitong. When it came to strength, Luo Haitong was at the same level as Gu Qingqing. Both of them were incredible beings, and it was difficult to tell which one was stronger. Han San was weaker than they were, but he had also just proved that the Dongxian Sutra was stronger than the Falsified Sky Sutra. Luo Haiteng only realized what happened after Han San left the room. He looked at the empty doorway and whispered, Lan Air, you have an incredible son. Perhaps the fate of our family will depend on him and his generation. Someone from the Luo family has actually gotten this powerful without practicing the Falsified Sky Sutra. Others might not believe me if I tell them. How will the Jade Shura react if they see him? Suddenly, Luo Haiteng smiled. Interesting. I can't believe I'm getting to see something this amazing before I die. Unfortunately, I won't live to see the day when he is standing against the Jade Shura. What a shame. Right after Hansen left Luo Haitong's room, Luo Li joined him and asked, What did you talk about with Godslayer Luo? The same old issues. Why did you even ask? You already know, said Hansen. You've agreed that Han Yin can come to our family? Luo Li was glad. Impossible. Han Yin is a member of the Han family, not one of you, said Han Sin, disturbed. What? How shallow you are. She's from a different family, and it's more than lucky for you to be able to practice the techniques of my family. How do you think like that? A furious voice came from behind them. Han Sin followed the voice, and he saw Luo Yu, Luo Hui, and the others standing nearby. It was Luo Yu talking. No wonder Luo Haiteng prefers me and Little Yin over everyone else in the Luo family. These people are so spoiled. Hansen shook his head, and he couldn't even be bothered to care about what Luo Yu had said. He pretended that he didn't hear anything, and he turned around and kept walking. However, Luo Yin didn't plan to let Hansen go that easily. The group blocked Han Sen's way. What do you want? Hansen looked at Luo Yu, frowning. Luo Yu curled his lips and said, You want to go hunt some super creatures, right? Then, to respect Luo Lan, I'll give you this chance. Han Sen was a bit surprised. He thought that Luo Yu meant him some harm, yet the man was inviting him to hunt super creatures. The super creatures must have been the ones discovered by Jia Shi Dao. Is that really necessary? Han Sen looked at Luo Yu, his expression veiled. He had some idea of what Luo Yu intended. Are you too chicken to go? said Luo Yu, disrespectfully. Of course I can go with you, but I'll get half the super creatures I hunt. Hansen didn't care much about what Luo Yu thought. If he could get life geno essences, he would totally go. No problem, as long as you can bring them down, Luo Yu promised him easily. When shall we go? Hansen didn't want to say anything more. Tomorrow, said Luo Yu. Okay, 
answered Han's senator. He then left the courtyard and went to meet Little Silver. Second brother, we tried so hard to find common ground with Jia Shirdao and get rid of Han's senator. Why are we bringing him now? asked Luo Hui. Luo, you said coldly. I was going to kick him out before because I wanted to show him the power of our family, and I'm bringing him now to show him our power again. And I also want to show our great-grandfather that there are talents in our family. He's just not giving us a chance. That's right. What was our great-grandfather thinking? Why is he using the Hans instead of us? muttered Luo Hui. Luo Haitong's choice had upset many from the Luo's family. They were in no position to judge his decision, but none of them were happy about it. Now that they had finally met Hansen, they wanted to perform well in front of Luo Haitang. They wanted Luo Haitang to know that they were better than Hansen. Luo, you didn't think he was any worse than Han Senator Hansen, might have been the first super aristocrat in the alliance, but to them, that was only a joke. With the help of Luo Haitang, the Luos had already gained super genes, but because of the rules of the Luo family, they didn't publicize it. Luo Li could only smile inside as she listened to Luo Yu rant. She knew Luo Yu and Luo Hui extremely well. They indeed had some power, but neither of them was exceptional, and with the status of Luo Haiteng and Godslayer Shelter, they had been spoiled since the day they were born. Even other demigods in the alliance had to pay them so much respect that they thought they were the most powerful demigods in existence, other than Luo Haiteng and several other great beings. They despised ordinary demigods with all their hearts, and they overestimated themselves. The next day, Han Sen took Little Silver to the square of Godslayer Shelter and found Luo Yu already standing there. Jia Shirdao was also there, and he was surprised to see Han Senator. He pretended to smile. What a coincidence, Brother Han. Not a coincidence. I called him, and he'll be following us this time, said Luo Yu. Jia Shirdao coughed, feeling awkward. He had no idea what Luo Yu was thinking. It had been Luo Yu who asked Jia Shirdao to kick Han Sen out. Yet now the man had asked Han San to come with them. Luo Yu took Han San to see several creatures, but he didn't say much. After all, it was not an easy job to domesticate powerful creatures. There were only a few super creatures in Godslayer Shelter. Besides, even those super creatures in the shelter wouldn't let them drive them like this. It was way more difficult to enslave super creatures than to kill them. Han Sen's super creatures were basically raised by him when they were only children. Mature ones like the Little Red Horse wouldn't be as obedient as those like Little Silver, and it was difficult to manipulate them. Everyone traveled under Jia Shirdao's guidance, and Luo Li also followed them. Her fighting power wasn't great, as she only had a gemstone Gino core. Luo Yu and Luo Hui weren't counting on her help, they just took her because they wanted her to be a witness. Luo Li wasn't a Luo by blood, but she was responsible for assisting Luo Haitang with mundane tasks so she spent more time with Luo Haidang than they did. If Luo Li saw it, that meant Luo Haidang also saw it. Luo Yu and Luo Hui didn't make a single attack on their way. When they ran into groups of creatures, the demigods following them took care of the threat. Those demigods had attached themselves to the Luos, but they didn't have the blood of the Luos, so they couldn't practice the falsified Sky Sutra. After more than four days, they finally arrived at the Dunja Shurdao had talked about. The ground was covered in white sand, and Han Sun could see some random green shadows in the distance. They were enormous, bulbous cacti. Jia Shirdao pointed at those cacti and said, Be careful, everyone. The cacti aren't plants, they're creatures. The super creatures that I talked about are the cacti at the heart of this dune. What kind of power do these cacti have? asked Luo Yu. Jia Shirdao wasn't willing to say anything before they arrived. So Luo Yu didn't know any more than Han Sen. Jia Shirdao found no reason to conceal it anymore. He pointed at the cactus closest to them and said, Those cacti aren't able to move, but they can spew their thorns out. The thorns can travel more than half a mile, so we need to be careful. No worries. Luo Yu summoned a beast soul shield, and he walked toward one of the cacti. When they were only a thousand feet away from the cactus, it noticed Luo Yu. All of a sudden, Thorns that were inches long spewed out. There were at least a hundred of them. However, those thorns weren't able to pierce through Luo Yu's shield. The shield warded off everything, while Luo Yu kept marching toward the cactus. The cactus seemed to have endless thorns. After it finished firing the first round of thorns, they immediately grew back and started to spew out again. 
However, none of the thorns were very strong, so the shield was able to ward them off. Luo Yu ran up to the cactus and slashed it in half. It is a creature, but it's only a mutant creature. Jia Shirdao, are you sure there are cacti at the super level? Luo Yu asked Jia Shirdao after killing the cactus. There are, definitely. I accidentally got in here before, and I saw a cactus made of gold, and that's at sacred blood level. There's another one that looks like a crystal pillar, and that's definitely a super creature, said Jia Shirdao. Then let's keep going. Luo Yu looked farther into the dune, then led the way with his shield. Ordinary cacti were not a threat to Luo Yu and the others. They had the power of falsified sky, and none of the cacti could even defend themselves against them. However, Han Sen also realized that Luo Yu and the others had only practiced the first half of the falsified sky sutra. He didn't understand why Luo Haiteng hadn't even taught his direct family members the complete version of the Falsified Sky Sutra. As for Luo Yu's body, it also looked strange to Han Senator both his strength and speed seemed to have reached super level, but his life force didn't seem as strong as it should have been. Instead, it had stayed at the sacred blood level. Han Sen didn't know that Luo Haiteng had obtained a life geno essence a long time ago but he wasn't able to absorb the life geno essence because of his practice of Shura change. The other Luos like Luo Yu were ordinary humans, but they hadn't figured out a method of absorbing life geno essences from the first god sanctuary, not to mention the fourth god sanctuary. Back then, the gene liquid that most people now use to absorb life geno essences hadn't been invented yet. Those from the generation of Luo Yu's and Luo Hui's father studied it for a long time and they finally came up with a special method to use life geno essences. That method wasn't the same as the conventional method of absorbing life geno essences. They borrowed it from a geno solution designed for a qigong, and it treated life geno essence as a geno solution. Though the technique didn't allow the user to merge the life geno essence with their own flesh and blood, it did create a strange geno solution with the origin of power of the luos. The Luos had another kind of special power aside from the power of falsified sky. When they arrived at the fourth god sanctuary, the geno solution they had condensed was transformed into a self-geno core. More importantly, that self-geno core still had the same ability to absorb life geno essences. When the geno core formed, it was automatically at super level. Aside from that self-geno core, they could also condense a second self-geno core from the falsified sky sutra, which was why the Luos were so proud. Having two self-geno cores, with one of those cores immediately rising to super level, gave the Luos the leverage to roam the alliance. However, there was a huge downside to this method. Their bodies hadn't reached super level, so the Luos were physically weak. Their life forces hadn't reached super level, which was why they felt strange to Han Sen. A couple hundred miles into the dune, they began to find cacti made of gold. They were all sacred blood creatures, yet they were still killed by Luo Yu and Luo Hui with one strike. The power of half the falsified Sky Sutra was already extraordinary. Han Sen also killed several golden cacti with his Taya and gained a bee soul. It was a heavy mace that was made of gold, and it looked forceful. However, Han Sen didn't know how to use this kind of unpopular weapon, so he would have to trade it. The cacti were bizarre. They were grown in the sand so they couldn't move at all, and the only attack techniques they had were thorns. Their flesh and blood weren't edible either. If Hansen hadn't already killed some, he wouldn't even have thought they were creatures. Luo Yu and the others weren't surprised to see Hansen slaying the sacred blood creatures. If Hansen couldn't even do that, Luo Haiteng wouldn't have valued him. Those cacti. After walking a thousand miles into the dune, Jia Shirdao pointed in front of them. Hansen and Luo Yu, and the others all followed Jia Shirdao's gaze. They saw a cactus that was ten feet tall, made of crystal, simmering under the sun. And it wasn't the only cactus. Behind that cactus were many other crystal cacti with a variety of shapes. Everyone stopped walking, and nobody dared to move forward anymore. Even Luo Yu and Luo Hui had to be careful when they faced super creatures. After all, their bodies were only as sturdy as sacred blood creatures, so they might be killed by super creatures. You want to kill a super creature, right? Now it's your chance to do so. Let's see whether you can actually do it or not, said Luo Yu, looking at Han Sen. Han Sen took a look at those cacti made of crystal, 
He shook his head and said, I don't even know what those cacti are capable of yet, so I'd better test them first. Although the previous cacti couldn't move at all, nobody could guarantee that these cacti wouldn't be able to move either. So Han Sin didn't want to risk it. If you're too scared to try it, then I'll do it first, said Luo Yu while summoning his Geno core. A red crystal armor covered Luo Yu's body, and a blade appeared in his hands. That red crystal armor looked bizarre. Han Sen felt that it was made of life Geno essence, but he couldn't tell how that had been done. Luo Yu's blade looked like the Shi King blade, but it wasn't as delicate. This is so weird. The power of that crystal armor doesn't seem to be connected to the falsified Sky Sutra at all, but it gives Luo Yu terrific power. Han Sen's interest was piqued. Luo Yu lifted his shield and dashed toward the cactus closest to him. Just like the ordinary cacti, it spewed out many thorns that looked like crystal. The thorns flew toward Luo Yu like a storm. Yang! Yeah. The thorns pierced Luo Yu's sacred blood shield. However, the thorns that hit his body were warded off by the crystal armor, so they didn't injure him at all. Han Xin Nu did. The Luos indeed have something to be proud of. With that armor, only a few humans like Gu Qingcheng would actually be able to hurt him. Luo Yu rushed toward the crystal cactus like a heavy armored soldier. The thorns hit his armor, making a sound like rain on a tin roof, but they still failed to pierce through the armor. Luo Yu was getting closer and closer to the cactus. The blade in his hand that contained the mysterious power of falsified sky slashed toward the crystal cactus. Jia Shi Dao was exhilarated, and he couldn't help yelling, Luo Yu is incredible. We can't even compare with him. Luo Yu smiled. It was right of you to cooperate with us. Big Brother's Geno Core has both attacks and defense. Killing creatures that can't move their bodies will be easy for him. Just wait here for the rewards. Luo Yu's blade hit the crystal cactus as they spoke, but in the next second, Luo Yu's face fell. The Geno Core blade that contained the power of falsified sky slashed the crystal cactus but it couldn't injure the crystal cactus in the slightest. The Geno Core Blade was a Geno Core condensed from the Falsified Sky Sutra, so it couldn't grow immediately to super level like the first self Geno Core. It was still a gemstone core. The body of the crystal cactus was too solid. Even if it had the power of Falsified Sky, the sword couldn't break the body of the crystal cactus at all. Luo Yu was trying to resist the attacks of the crystal thorns, and he kept slashing the crystal cactus with his blade. He struck the crystal cactus easily every time. He had already covered the entire surface of the cactus in blows, yet he left nothing more than white scratch marks on its surface. Hansen shook his head. The best aspect of falsified sky power is that it hits its target every time, and it can even bypass the defenses and deal damage inside the body. In this case, however, Luo Yu doesn't have enough power to damage the body of the crystal cactus. Even though he can hit it, he won't be able to break it. Luo Hui and Jia Shi Dao were terrified to see that Luo Yu couldn't break the cactus. Luo Yu fought the crystal cactus, yet he couldn't do any harm to the crystal cactus, while the crystal cactus couldn't hurt him either. Luo Yu fought for a while, then he suddenly retreated, leaving the attack range of the crystal cactus. Its body is too sturdy. Luo Hui, you're our only chance now, said Luo Yu. Looking at Luo Hui, perhaps my Geno Core Truth Spear can hurt it, but I don't have a Geno Core armor, so I can't approach him, said Luo Hui. Unlike Luo Yu, Luo Hui's first self Geno Core was a spear, and it was an incredibly destructive, super level core. Don't worry, I'll ward off the crystal thorns for you, and you can kill it, said Luo Yu. Okay. Luo Yu no dead. They rushed forward and Luo Yu defended them against the thorns while Luo Hui moved toward the nearest crystal cactus. Luo Hui immediately summoned a shining spear that was made from golden crystal. It pierced the crystal cactus, and half the tip went in. We can definitely kill it easily. Luo Yu was exhilarated. He and Luo Hui moved among the crystal cactuses, leaving more and more injuries upon them. Jia Shi Dao and the others were also overjoyed. Lu Che said, that crystal cactus is impressive. It's fortunate that we have both Luo Yu and Luo Hui. Otherwise, we wouldn't stand a chance of killing them. Jia Shi Dao also nodded and said excitedly, we can finally get a life Geno essence, so this trip won't have been in vain. After almost three hours, 
Luo Hui finally broke the crystal cactus with his truth spear, and they watched the crystal cactus dissipate. However, no life geno essence was left behind. Luo Yu and Luo Hui had used too much energy, so they had to retreat. What's happening? Where's the life geno essence? asked Jia Shirdao, confused. Luo Yu froned. It's so strange. Though we killed that crystal cactus, we didn't hear any notification of it being killed. No notification at all? How is that possible? Jia Shirdao couldn't believe it. Something strange about that crystal cactus, said Luo Yu. If it's actually a super creature, it should have left behind a life geno essence. Jia Shirdao thought it made sense. Though he rose to the fourth god sanctuary before killing super creatures became common in the previous sanctuaries, the life geno essence wasn't a secret anymore, and he knew that ordinary super creatures all had a life geno essence. This cactus didn't have one though, so something was definitely wrong with it. We've lost too much energy. Let's rest for a while, and then we can kill another crystal cactus and see, Luo Yu said, then looked at Han Sr. You've already seen the crystal cactuses and their powers. Don't you want to go and kill one? Okay. Hansen didn't decline this time. Hansen had watched carefully as Luo Yu and Luo Hui fought. These crystal cactuses weren't much different from the ordinary cactuses, aside from stronger thorn spewing power and sturdier bodies. Luo Yu and the others saw Hansen going, and they couldn't help frowning. They didn't know what Hansen had that would allow him to defend himself against the cactus and kill it at the same time. Jia Shidao looked at Han Sen, surprised. He was surprised that Han Sen dared to go attack it after seeing the impressive abilities of the crystal cactuses. Luo Li wasn't surprised at all. She watched Han Sen, curious about how powerful he had become. Han Sen left little silver behind, and he walked toward a pillar-like cactus twelve feet tall. The cactus was triggered and began to fire crystal thorns toward him. They were extremely fast and they didn't give him a chance to dodge. Hansen didn't intend to dodge them. Instead, he summoned his overbearing shield, which was exactly the right size to protect him against the thorns, and then he kept walking with the shield in his hand. The thorns hit the shield with a rattling noise. Luo Yu and Jia Shirdao opened their eyes wide when they saw the crystal thorns failing to pierce through Hansen's shield. However, what happened next shocked them to their very core. Not only was the shield unharmed, but the thorns bounced off the shield so hard that they buried themselves back in the cactus. Though they didn't do much harm, it was still quite unbelievable. What kind of beast soul is that? It's deflecting all the attacks from the super creature? Said Luo Hui, surprised. It's only a beast soul. It doesn't mean anything. That's only his tool. Not the power he actually has, said Luo Yu coldly. Han San continued walking toward the crystal cactus. He summoned his split blade Geno core and slashed the cactus like he was cutting a water vat. The cactus that took Luo Hui more than two hours to break was slashed in half by Han San with only one strike, and he didn't even need to strike it a second time. How is that possible? Luo Yu couldn't stay calm anymore. He stared incredulously as the crystal cactus faded away and Han San stood in front of it. Jia Shirdao and the others were completely bewildered. They had thought that Luo Yu and Luo Hui were very powerful, yet those two couldn't even compare with Han Sen. It had taken Luo Yu and Luo Hui hours to kill one crystal cactus, yet Han Sen killed one with a single strike. The gap between them was so huge that they weren't even in the same league. Luo Li was shocked as well. She knew that Han Sen was strong, yet this was beyond what even she had guessed. There isn't any notification after you kill one. Are these crystal cactuses really creatures? Hansen frowned. Just as Luo Hui had said, no notification sounded as the cactus disappeared. Just as Han San was looking around in confusion, the crystal cactuses all started to move. By the time everyone realized what was happening, the crystal cactuses had surrounded them, much to everyone's horror. Jia Shirdao and the others looked completely horrified as the crystal cacti surrounded them like a forest. Luo Yu and Luo Hui also looked frightened. Luo Yu had the armor, so he wasn't afraid of the thorns of the crystal cacti. However, Luo Hui didn't have any armor to protect him. If those crystal cacti attacked him from all directions at the same time, there was no way he would survive it. Luo Yu wouldn't be much better off. Though he had armor to protect him, 
those crystal cacti had already surrounded him like a cage. No matter how strong his armor was, he would still die if he couldn't break free. Just as everyone was starting to panic, the crystal cacti separated and made a path in the direction of a mountain valley. Two creatures that looked identical were walking down either side of the path. The two creatures looked like jade, and their shapes looked like the legendary white beasts. Luoli was shocked when she saw two mutant creatures coming out. She shouted, Those are super creatures called white beasts. I saw one once when I was following Luo Haide. However, he said that white beasts are extremely rare creatures, and it's difficult for them to procreate. He thought there might have been only one white beast in the entire fourth god sanctuary. He wanted to domesticate the white beast that we saw, but it managed to escape. It's extremely powerful. Now two white beasts just showed up at the same time. What is this place? Both Luo Yu and Luo Hui looked sick after hearing what Luo Li said. A terrifying cactus forest and two super creatures that even their patriarch praised. They had even less chance of surviving now. The two white beasts walked down the path. They stepped aside without attacking Han Seon or the others. After the white beasts stepped aside, the group saw another creature walking behind the white beasts. That creature was a black bull with goat horns, and there was white mist surrounding its hoofs as if it were stepping on the clouds. Sky Cloud Sacred Beast Luoli was horrified. Though Luoli didn't say anything about the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast, the name itself had already made Luo Yu and Luo Hui desperate. Jia Shirdao didn't know what a Sky Cloud Sacred Beast was, but he could tell from Luo Yu and Luo Hui that it was even more terrifying than a white beast. The Sky Cloud Beast kept walking toward them. Though it didn't let out its power, it made Luo Yu feel an indefinable sense of pressure. Sweat covered his palms. If it weren't for the crystal cacti blocking their way, they would have run far away instead of standing there staring at the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast. Luo Yu and Luo Hui had both heard of Sky Cloud Sacred Beasts before. They were Borzirk super creatures, and they were some of the most powerful creatures in the Fourth God's Sanctuary. No matter how arrogant and proud Luo Yu and Luo Hui were, they wouldn't be naive enough to think that they could actually rival a Berserk super creature. They were already sinking into hopelessness as the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast walked toward them. They didn't see any chance that they would survive. The Sky Cloud Sacred Beast walked into the encirclement. It didn't even glance at Luo Yu and the others. Instead, it stepped directly toward Hansen. Are you Sky Sword Hansen? The Sky Cloud Sacred Beast stared at Han Sen with its eyes that looked like brass bells. I'm Han Sen, but I won't call myself Sky Sword. Who are you? Han Sen was a little dazed. He had already prepared to have a huge battle. He'd been planning to use the technique he learned in God's Ruin and summon his Destiny's Tower to smash his way out. He hadn't expected the terrifying creature to call out his name. Luo Hui and Luo Yu looked between the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast and Han Sen confused, as they didn't know what was happening. Clearly, Hansen didn't know what a Sky Cloud Sacred Beast was, yet it had called Han Sen's name, so apparently it was coming for him. It is indeed Sky Sword, your highness. My young master wants to meet you, so please come to the shelter and greet him. The Sky Cloud Sacred Beast nodded at the white beast beside it. One of the white beasts moved to lay down in front of Han Senator, it seemed that it wanted Han San to ride it. Luo Yu and the others were all bewildered. Even if Luo Haiteng came here by himself, he wouldn't have had such a welcoming. After all, Luo Haiteng was so ferocious that many creatures and spirits hated him. If the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast met him, there might have been a huge battle instead of a warm welcoming like this. Besides, the Sky Cloud Sacred Beast had said it had a master. This being was terrifying enough to control a Sky Cloud Sacred Beast and he had just invited Han San to his shelter with such an ostentatious presentation. They couldn't even imagine what was going on. Sorry, may I ask who your young master is? Han San couldn't think of anyone he knew who could afford something so grand. You'll know when you meet him. Sky Cloud, Sacred Beast, didn't answer the question directly. Han San saw that the Sky Cloud, Sacred Beast, didn't mean anything hostile, and besides, he didn't really have a choice. Instead of asking more questions, he just sat down on the white beast. The sky cloud sacred beast turned around and began walking deep into the dune while the white beast carrying Han Sen followed it. Little Silver was lying on Han Sen's head. 
He squinted his eyes and looked at the sky cloud, sacred beast in front of him. Bauer was riding the small icy horse behind Hansen, and Little Star quickly followed as well. What should we do? Luo Hui asked anxiously. They were still encircled by the crystal cacti and couldn't get out. He's the son of Sister Lon. He'll be merciful. Luo Li then followed Han Sen, looking at him riding the white beast with a complicated expression. Luo Yu clenched his teeth and asked Luo Hui and the others to follow him. Jia Shi Dao didn't have any other choice. He was nervous, but the whole thing also seemed a little unbelievable. He didn't know what was happening or what he was getting himself into. Under the guidance of the sky cloud sacred beast, everyone arrived at the deepest area of the dune. They saw a shelter that looked like a bronze mountain, and it was spectacular. There was a spirit waiting in front of the shelter. When Luo Yu and the others saw the spirit, they looked more upset. Luo Haiteng was well known in this shelter. He was respected, but he had made lots of enemies as well. Usually Luo Haitong's enemies were all horrifying beings. Luo Yu and Luo Hui recognized the spirit when they saw him standing in front of the bronze mountain shelter. That spirit was a descendant of one of Luo Haitong's enemies, and it had a great reputation in the sanctuary. If that spirit knew that they were descendants of Luo Haitang, they might be doomed. Luo Yu and Luo Hui's faces were a little pale. While they were still fidgeting nervously, the spirit appeared. Sky Sword Teacher, you are finally here. I waited for you for the longest time. The spirit walked in front of Han San and bowed seriously. He spoke with much excitement. Luo Yu, Luo Hui, and Luo Li were frozen. Jia Shi Dao had no idea who the spirit was. Luo Yu knew about the spirit, and he watched as the spirit bowed towards Han Senator. It was an unimaginable thing, and they initially believed themselves to be dreaming. The son of Furnace Emperor was Su Mi, and he and his mother were second gen emperors. He had bowed to a human, and they never thought something like that would ever occur. After all, since when had humanity achieved such a reputation? And since when had they earned the right to such respect? Even Luo Haiteng, despite becoming so famous, had never earned the respect and privilege Han San was getting. But now they saw Sumi bow to Han San and welcome him into the shelter. The level of prestige and respect he had earned was no joke. Han San had promised Sumi he'd teach him a sword skill, but he never expected to meet the spirit here. With much surprise, Hansen said, Furnace Shelter is here? Ksumi smiled. Teacher, Furnace Shelter has the ability to teleport. We moved here recently, but we didn't expect to meet you. This is most fortuitous. After entering Furnace Shelter, Sumi brought Han San to a hall. Luo Yu and the others saw Bauer and Little Star following, and they started to follow as well. They, however, were stopped. Wait here. If it wasn't for Mr. Sky Sword, you humans from Godslayer Shelter would have all been killed. The white beasts hummed. They were guarding the left and right sides of the entrance to the hall. Luo Yu did not know where they could go. They did not want to walk around in furnished shelter, so they just waited outside. They were quite nervous, but they were still glad Han San was there. Otherwise, they might have been killed. Of course, if Sumi knew about the grudge between Luo Haiteng and Furnace Emperor, they'd still be on the chopping block. What did he do? Why do spirits like Sumi obey him? Not even Big Luo receives treatment like that. Luo Li looked towards the hall with a complicated expression. The way inside had been closed now, though, so she couldn't see what Han San was doing there. Sumi, is this the teacher you requested? Inside the hall, Furnace Emperor, who looked like a god, looked at Han San and frowned. Sumi had made it sound important when he requested that Skycloud Beast bring back Han Senator Furnace Emperor thought Sumi was going to get a very powerful teacher. He did not expect it to be only a human, one who was not even super at that. What can you teach my son? Furnace Emperor was not happy with Sumi's decision, but he wasn't so brash as to throw Hansen out right then and there. Sumi wants to learn a sword skill from me, so it is a sword skill I will teach him, Hansen answered. Sumi quickly stepped in to say, Father, teacher's sword skills are strong and even Six Paths said his talent is as high as the sky. That is why he is called Sky Sword. Furnace Emperor heard that and was actually convinced. To earn the compliments of Six Paths, Hansen had to have been powerful indeed. But Furnace Emperor could not tell what was so special about Hansen. So he said, 
If you have earned the name Sky Sword and earned the appreciation of Six Paths Emperor, your sword skills must indeed be good. My garden has a sword mark. It was delivered by Holy Sword Emperor during his ascension to the Fifth Sanctuary. You can take a look at it. Perhaps you may learn something. The Holy Sword Emperor he mentioned was an emperor who was good with the sword. He was powerful in the Fourth God Sanctuary around 500,000 years ago. His most impressive talent was his proficiency with the sword. When he leveled up, he broke the dimension with his blade. The aftershock crashed against a mountain, leaving a cleft across the landscape that never faded away. The mountain belonged to Furnace Emperor, and he had it moved to the gardens so it would be close to Sumi. It was easier for Sumi to learn the sword skills from it by having it there. Holy Sword Emperor's sword skills were special. Many sword elites had made the pilgrimage to visit that scar, but more often than not, they did not learn anything. Some were very seduced by it, though, and some even came close to losing their sword heart. Furnace Emperor wished to let Han Sin take a look so he could test the fortitude of the human's mind. If the scar did claim Han Sin's heart and he was seduced by the sword mind, no matter how good people said he was, he wouldn't be a good enough teacher for Sumi. Sumi knew this was Furnace Emperor's game, but he didn't think Han Sin would end up getting seduced by the sword mind. So, he said, Teacher, let me take you to the sword mark. Han San and Furnace Emperor did not have much to talk about. Talking to the spirit, who was sitting loftily on his throne, was boring. So, he was happy to leave with Sumi. Han San brought Bauer along with him to the garden. And while it was called a garden, it was huge. The thousand-meter-high mountain only took up a fifth of the space there. Han San looked at the mountain. There was a sword mark there that had almost cut the mountain in two. Sumi explained. Holy Sword Emperor broke the vacuum with his sword and created a way that led him to the fifth sanctuary. The sword waves landed on this mountain and left a sword mine behind. Many sword elites have come to face this, but left with nothing. I come here to try and learn from the mark, but not even I can learn a thing. If it was left behind by a sword emperor, you should have been able to learn something, Hansen said, with confusion. Standing at the door, Hansen felt an insanely scary presence stemming from the sword mark. The sword mind was strong. Just being near it should have allowed for some sort of learning. Just like people said, if you read 300 poems and still cannot write your own, you will at least be able to read. You cannot walk away with absolutely nothing. Teacher, you don't understand. Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind is special. Many emperor class elites visit here, and none of them learn anything. Many of them get seduced and almost lose themselves completely, Sumi explained as he brought Han San through the garden. In the spirit hall, Furnace Emperor and a female spirit watched through an old mirror as Han San entered the garden. If that human does not get seduced by the sword mark, will you really let Sumi become his student? The female spirit frowned while watching the video feed. If he does not get seduced by the sword mind, and with what Six Paths Emperor has said about him, I can only presume he is qualified, Furnace Emperor said. The female spirit shook her head. My son's teacher should be the strongest swordsman in the world. Being qualified is not enough for me. Han San entered the garden and felt the sword mind's influence emerge from the cleft. The sword mind was strange. Most swordsmen would give people a sharp feeling or a strong sensation of intimidation. But this sword mind in particular was different. It toiled back and forth like waves endlessly. It didn't feel intimidating, per se, but it was hard and tough. It felt as if the sword mind was not strong at first, and everyone had the chance to battle it through their own sheer will. It wasn't a task only reserved for the capabilities of super beings, though. Those who were gemstones confront it just as well. There were no disadvantages to having a weaker body, but the sword mind, despite not feeling very strong, would perplex most swordsmen, and leave them unsure of how to proceed. Not even super elites had managed to tame it, and they were often negatively affected by it. When people first see it, they aren't sure if this really is Holy Sword Emperor's sword mark. They have to spend a while getting a feel for it before they acknowledge how frightening it can be. This sword mind is like an endless river. The pressure it exudes builds up over time, and the more pressure that builds up, the stronger it becomes. Gemstones class creatures can watch it for a few days, and without being affected, super elites can hardly even make it tin. 
they are affected after some time, and they might even suffer injuries. In some cases, their faith can be broken and their own sword mind damaged, Sumi said. Han Sin Nu did. He practiced had sword skills, and although it wasn't the best, he had a sword mind of his own, especially after seeing Six Paths Heart Sword. Ever since, his sword skills had developed to become something special. If he was affected by Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind, it would be a great loss. Sumi went on to say, Don't try to use your own sword mind against Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind. His sword mind is like water. If you use your sword mind against it, it'll be like trying to go against the stream. The more strength you use, the more pressure will be put against you. If you don't go against it, you could at least last a few days. If you willingly go against it, I'm afraid you wouldn't last a day. In only a few hours, your sword mind might be irreparably damaged. It looks tame, but it is actually overbearing, Han Sun said. Well, it did come from an emperor of the sword generation, Sumi said. Han Sin felt the sword mind's rush and likened it to a lapsing tide. He thought to himself, I have practiced heart sword. My sword skills are tough. I can challenge the water, never giving up. Going against Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind is a perfect opportunity to make my heart sword stronger. Han San knew that Furnace Emperor had asked him to go there to see the mark as a form of test. Han Sin didn't really want to teach Sumi, so it didn't matter that he had to take this detour. He wasn't in a particular rush to give Furnace Emperor an impressive demonstration. Han Sin used his sword mind, and then the mark's sword mind that was previously tame suddenly began to swell. The stronger Han Sin pushed his sword mind, the more pressure the other sword mind brought down on him. It was just as Sumi had explained. Sumi saw Han Sin use his sword mind against Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind, and he became very excited as he watched them fight. His sword mind looks like heart sword. There is definitely a bit of difference between his and Six Paths variants, however. Furnace Emperor watched Han Sin use his sword mind. He could see it all. Furnace Emperor had fought Six Paths once. He lost, but the experience made him very familiar with Six Paths sword skills. Sumi's mother, Fire Empress, frowned. Sumi told him what he knows about Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind, and still he uses his own sword mind to go against it. He is brave, but he is too arrogant. He is not suitable to be Sumi's teacher. Furnace Emperor shook his head. Don't be so sure. Although Six Paths Emperor is not as good as Holy Sword Emperor, they are not too far apart. He self-destructed and became an emperor again, starting from scratch. Restarting like that means he might not be any worse than Holy Sword Emperor now. If Han Sin really practiced Heart Sword, even if he only managed to nail 70% of it, he will definitely be able to resist the power of this sword mind without bringing damage to himself. If he only knows 70%, then why not just ask Six Paths to become his teacher instead? Fire Empress said, It's not that easy to hire Six Paths. If he didn't take Sumi seriously, then paying him would be pointless. Furnace shook his head. Sumi has our great genes. The talents he has must surely be better than those of Six Paths. If Sumi is not good enough to be his student, I don't think anyone in the Fourth God Sanctuary would be good enough for him. Fire Empress opened her eyes wide. She was like any mother, though, thinking her son was the best. The pressure building upon Han Sin was becoming a lot. When he used his sword mind, the sword mark that was previously calm suddenly started to rage. Han Sin felt as if he had been thrust into a rapid river. The other sword mind was griding against his sword skills, and he felt as if he'd be flattened any second. A sword mind wasn't all about pure power. The sword mind concerned itself with the sensation of the sword. It was something you could only feel and not describe. You could not touch it either, as it was not solid. But if your sword mind was damaged, things could turn out worse than if you endured a physical injury. When physical damage was inflicted upon you, you could consult a doctor and use their medicine to heal. But if it was your heart that was injured, nothing could remedy it. You would have to use your own will to fix it. Han San felt as if his sword mind was like steel, but it was getting ground down. His will was being used up quickly. If he had been a person with a weak will, he'd have gone crazy already. Even a swordsman with a strong will wouldn't have lasted this long under this sort of opposition. But Han San was different. His heart sword gave him a strong sword mind, 
and his will was reinforced by the crystallizers. That scary sword mind could not break his will. No matter how much the sword mind tried to break his will, Han San was unmoved. Instead, he allowed his will to get stronger. Time passed, and so far, an hour had gone by. No wonder he is the teacher. He has battled with Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind for an hour, all without moving. He is better than those super swordsmen, Sumi complimented him. He is good, Furnace Emperor said. Fire Empress coldly said, It's only been one hour. If he can last twelve, and his sword mind is still fine, then he can be Sumi's teacher. Twelve hours? I doubt he'd be human if he managed that. Out of all the super swordsmen that have tried, only one has ever managed to last twelve hours. And that person isn't much weaker than six paths. Do you really think Han San stands a chance? Furnace Emperor wore a wry smile. But we need someone that accomplished. Otherwise, how can we be happy with our selection of Sumi's teacher? Fire Empress said with certainty. Furnace Emperor merely shook his head and did not speak. Powerful elites such as that wouldn't teach others, he believed. He thought Han San was fine, as he had the strength and had learned Six Paths Heartsword. He would be a fine choice for Sumi's teacher. But Furnace Emperor wouldn't do anything Fire Empress did not approve of, so the decision was ultimately up to her. Han San was unmoving while he battled Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind. The sword mind was like a grinding wheel, but it couldn't diminish Han Sen's mind. Instead, it felt more like a smithy's grindstone. The hard edges swept by Han Sen, making him sharper as time went on. If Han Sen's sword mind was comparable to steel, the grinding process was making it sparkle like a well-cut jewel. Time passed, and after six hours, seeing he was doing fine, Sumi looked ecstatically happy. Furnace Emperor had to give another compliment, and he said, this kid is not bad. Sumi's got taste. With such a strong will and sword skills, Sumi is bound to learn a thing or two by accepting this guy as his teacher. Fire Empress, seeing Han San performing without trouble or anything, found herself half convinced, actually. But she still showed refrain and said, We've only reached the halfway point. It's still too early for us to say anything. Another two hours passed. Furnace Emperor was very convinced by this point and he said, this kid still hasn't moved at all. His will is stern. Finding another person like this would be difficult. Fire Empress was more convinced, as well, but she quietly said, there are still four hours to go. Let's see if he can make it first. Another two hours passed and Hansen hadn't moved at all, just like he hadn't the past ten hours. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress were in shock. Even now, Hansen wasn't showing signs of moving. It almost looked as if he wasn't affected by the sword mind. They now thought Han San could safely make it to the 12 hour mark. My son has a good eye. Finding a teacher like this will be of a great boon and benefit for him. Every time Furnace Emperor spoke about Han San, his tone was different. He had passed from simple observation to agreement, and now he was full of admiration. He had changed his views a lot. Fire Empress didn't look so arrogant now either. She watched the stream in shock and she said, this human is indeed different. He is qualified to be Sumi's teacher. The two emperors thought Han San could easily make it to 12 hours, and their opinions of him began to become the same. More time elapsed, and after 12 hours passed, Sumi couldn't help but blurt out compliments. Teacher, you are super special. Across all these years, only one person has ever made it 12 hours against the sword mind. You are the second one to achieve this. Hansen didn't hear what he said, though. His focus rested solely on the sword mind. The sword mind was grinding against his will, and all that time, Hansen's own sword mind had been growing stronger. But after a while, Hansen started to believe there was something wrong with the sword mind. He couldn't grind his own sword mind anymore, and Hansen walked towards the sword mark without realizing it. He wanted to get closer to it, so he could get a stronger feel for it. What is he doing? Fire Empress watched Han San approach the mark. Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind always appeared tame, but things were vastly different when Han San got nearer. Holy Sword Emperor had swung his sword and left the mountain with his sword mind, and it had lasted ever since his departure. This sword mind was extreme. The closer to the sword mark you got, the more intensely you could feel Holy Sword Emperor's will. 
It was the faith he had used to break the dimension. It was an everlasting sword mind. Back then, many elites came to watch Holy Sword Emperor ascend. Many of them wished to claim the mountain for themselves afterwards, but in the end, it was Furnace Emperor who owned it. And that was because normal folk wouldn't dare touch the mountain, and they could not move it as he could. Inside the sword mind, it did not matter whether or not you were an emperor that focused purely on sword skills. If you simply touched the sword mark, you would be attacked by the will required for breaking through the vacuum. Your will would be heavily damaged. The reason the elites weren't able to take the sword marked mountain was because only Furnace Emperor met the teleportation requirement via Furnace Shelter. He teleported Furnace Shelter around the base of the mountain. Then, he was able to take it away with him. Now Han San had been grinding against the sword mine for 12 hours, his own will had proven far too effective. It had not broken, and so he dared to venture closer to the sword mark. This was way too shocking for Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress. This young man's will is strong. It's like the best elite in existence. Furnace Emperor spoke with a look of seriousness. Fire Empress didn't say anything, but the way she looked at Han San said it all. There was no more disdain, just surprise. Han San approached the sword mark and felt the sword mind become stronger. His sword mind got even sharper, and his will became stronger. He was 100 meters away from the sword mark when he slowed down. But every step was so sure. There was no hesitation accompanying a single one. Han Sen's entire body looked as if it had become a sharp sword. It was as if he was breaking the water as he advanced towards the cleft. Finally, Han Sen stepped onto the mountain and touched the mark. Boom! The endless sword mind came at Han Sen like the ceaseless discharge of an infinite river. It was like putting Han Sen's sword mind into a river of time to remain washed forevermore. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress' faces changed. They did not expect Han San to approach the mountain and use his hand to physically touch the sword mark. That mark had been left behind by an elite that was halfway through the process of becoming a god. He was ascending to the fifth sanctuary when this happened, and even an emperor's will would be damaged if they touched it. Han San's will was strong, but there was a chance even he would be damaged by touching it. If he did it poorly, his will would be broken and never return. Oh no. Furnace Emperor's stomach fell. He was very satisfied with Han Sen's skill, and it'd be a shame if the human was destroyed right there. It wasn't easy for Sumi to find such an accomplished teacher. Fire Empress sighed. She agreed Han Sen had enough power, but she never thought he'd be reckless enough to go and touch the mark. That was sure to hurt. Fire Empress merely hoped he wouldn't be damaged too badly to teach Sumi. The endless sword mind kept rushing against Han Sen's will, and even Han Sen found it difficult to withstand. He felt as if he was falling into an abyss, where hope and life forces were gone forever. If others were in his shoes, their wills would have broken. They would have given up, but Han Sen did not know what giving up meant. Beneath that pressure, his mind was still as hard as brushed steel, and he clung to the small amount of faith he had. At a time like this, Success was not achieved through strength. It wasn't about talent, either. It was all determined by a person's personality and the prior experiences that had shaped them. If their personalities were weak, it did not matter how refined their skills were. Their will would crumble. This was even true for super elites. Even with a mind that was really strong, it was difficult to survive this sort of force. Han Sen was a person with a mighty will and he had adopted the stubborn personality that defined his parents. But even so, beneath the pressure of the sword mind, his grip and will were starting to lessen. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress saw Han Sen's expression change, and they broke out in a cold sweat. They knew this was bad news. Han Sen might not be able to withstand the constant force much longer, and his sword mind and will could soon buckle and break. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress teleported to the garden. They planned to pull Han Sen out of the sword mark. But before they could try, Han Sen's sword mind surged like an erupting volcano. The force charged out from Han Sen's sword mind to suppress the sword mind of the very mountain itself. How is this possible? Fire Empress and Furnace Emperor were frozen in shock. They could not believe what their eyes were witnessing. A human that did not even look superclass had a sword mind capable of suppressing Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind. 
They felt as if the world was changing right below their feet. They froze in place, unsure of exactly what they were doing. Sumi was very excited at this point, and he said, Teacher's sword mind is so powerful. I don't think I could find anyone with a stronger sword mind than his. Not even Six Paths Emperor could keep up with this performance. Hansen felt terrible, though. When his sword mind almost broke, the sleeping black crystal armor suddenly unleashed an additional portion of will directly into his sword mind to bolster it. It was then that Han Sen's sword mind erupted like mad, without any control. It allowed him to brush away Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind. He was even able to suppress the sword mind of the entire mountain. But the will that came from the black crystal armor was too strong, and when it entered Han Sen's sword mind, he was almost unable to accept it all. Fortunately, Hansen had a strong personality and will. He made the best decision he could in the short amount of time he had to decide. He used his sword mind to reinforce that will. Although it was hard, primarily due to the fact that Hansen's sword mind was weak and the boosting will was strong, Hansen's own will was strong too. The boosting will was going accept him, so it was able to assimilate with Hansen's sword mind and allow a seamless increase in strength. When that additional will refined itself inside Han Sen's sword mind, it became stronger. Boom! Beneath the powerful impact of the sword mind, the mountain was sundered. It was cut in half and flung wide open. Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind was fading, and all that remained was Han Sen's. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress felt their mouths drop, but they didn't say anything, they just froze as if they had become petrified. Holy Sword Emperor's sword mind had been broken by Han Senator, it was difficult to believe. Luo Yu, Luo Hui, Luo Li, and Jia Shirdao had been waiting in the plaza for two days. But Han Sen had yet to return. Luo Hui complained, Han Sen is too arrogant. We are his elders, so why would he just leave us here? This is not Godslayer Shelter, and it's not his territory either. He can't control anything here. Just wait a little longer, Luo Li said. Yeah, we're lucky we're still breathing. Just wait a while, Jia Shirdao said. Luo Yu started to say something, but before he could, the gates swung open. The two white beasts stepped to either side as someone came out. Is he finally coming out? The group of them had a look. It was indeed Han Sen who came striding out. Luo Li wanted to shout Han Sen's name, but she closed her mouth when she saw the people around him. Luo Yu and Luo Hui's faces changed. The people who walked out alongside Han Sen were Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress. They stood beside him, with Sumi trailing them from behind. Teacher Han, please teach Sumi well. Hit him if you need to. Treat and think of him as you would your own child, Fire Empress said. Yes, Teacher Han. Let us know if there is anything you need. We will try to accommodate your needs in whatever way we can. Furnace Emperor spoke with earnest passion. Luo Li, Luo Yu and Luo Hui were frozen in shock. They couldn't believe what their eyes were telling them. Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress were top-tier spirits of the Fourth God Sanctuary, and yet, they were being friendly and very respectful to Han San. It was hard to imagine how a human could get the likes of Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress to treat them that way. Not even Luo Heiteng could accomplish that. Don't worry, I will teach him. But how much he learns depends on his talent and his effort, Han San said. You are right, Teacher Han. If Sumi can only learn a small bit from you, you can consider us satisfied, Furnace Emperor said. Fire Empress said, It is up to Sumi how much he can learn from you. Even if he only learns a small amount from you, it is good enough for him. Josh Dao and the others were all frozen. The two powerful spirits didn't sound like emperors at all. Not as the humans had imagined. They looked like proper parents that were simply trying to snipe a good teacher for their kid. Is he really that strong? Luo Li was confused. She knew Han Sen was strong, but she found it hard to believe he was that strong. Even emperors were talking to him nicely. She hoped her own child might one day be able to study underneath his wing. Luo Hui and Luo Yu's brains were just empty. They could muster no reaction. When they walked out of furnace shelter with Han Sen, they still felt as if they were in a dream and none of it was real. Sumi followed Han Sen out of furnace shelter. He was going to travel with him as a student. Hansen wasn't very good at teaching, but even if he only took the time to teach Sumi some skills of the Alliance, it would be enough. Compared to human education, 
what spirits received was pretty much rubbish. Spirits could live forever, so they could learn what they wanted whenever they wanted. There was no need for efficiency and proper timetabling. Humans weren't like that, of course. In ancient times, it was said that it was rare for humans to see the age of 70. That was considered a very old age, but a human's learning capabilities declined after the age of 30. Anyway, therefore, a core principle for humanity was the need for studying effectively and in a timely manner. Humans always tried to find the best ways to learn and absorb knowledge in the shortest amount of time. There were many different ways to study, but all of them were highly organized. This had been very important in ancient times. It didn't matter whether someone went to a public school or went to a private martial hall. The education they received had been refined for millennia. It was far better than anything spirits ever received. Hansen did not think it would be difficult to teach Sumi. He asked the AI to formulate a plan and course of education for Sumi, too. There were humans in furnace shelter, but no one really ever listened to them. Sumi certainly wouldn't, especially since he was emperor class. He had never taken the time to learn how humans studied. What Hansen presented him with was all new. It fascinated him, and he put a lot of effort into studying as hard as he could. Luo Li, Luo Yu, and Luo Hui looked weirded out. They thought Han Sen's teaching method was so dull and average. They expected him to teach Sumi something grand and powerful. After seeing this, they wondered why Sumi would have such great respect for him. They could not understand why Furnace Emperor and Fire Empress had treated Han San so well, either. But still, they kept their thoughts to themselves. They were a bit scared of Han Sen, and they did not want to criticize him. Han Sen, why don't you come to God Slayer Shelter with us? After they left the Valley of Sand, Luo Li invited Han Sen to come back with them. I'm going back to my own shelter. Take care. Han Sen was not a fan of the Luo family, and so he didn't want to stick with them very long. He brought the Silver Fox, Sumi, and the rest to leave with him. Jia Shirdao knew the Luo family's relationship with Han Sen was strained. He didn't say anything regarding that, but he did think to himself, it's difficult to discern the intricacies of genes. I am afraid the Luo family will fall, and when it does, the Han family will rise to supersede them. Maybe Han Sen will one day become better than Luo Haidang himself. It looks like the Iron Fist Martial Hall will need to morph to accommodate the coming change. Han Sen brought Sumi with him to his shelter. His new guest was a second-gen super spirit, so no creatures or spirits gave them any trouble on the return trip. Han Sen did not go back to God's ruin, and Sumi told them the place was shut down now. Anyway, it would be many decades before it reopened. Little Lion King had gone back to Lion Mountain, so there was no point going back there, either. What are those crystal cacti in the Valley of Sand? Hansen asked Sumi. Sumi smiled and said, It is a super creature. It isn't a normal one, though, and it is actually called Cactus Needle. My parents spent a lot of time trying to claim it, so it could stand guard and protect the shelter. The crystal cactus branch you broke in the beginning was just an illusion. It didn't affect the real creature. Unless you find its real body and kill it, it can just keep on summoning illusions like that. The illusions are all strong, just like super creatures, too. It makes for a powerful ally. That is a very powerful super creature, indeed. It doesn't sound any weaker than a berserk super creature. Actually, Hansen complimented it. Yeah, if it wasn't, I don't think my parents would have exerted as much effort as they did when they claimed it. Sumi spoke of this proudly. They returned to Shadow Shelter before long, and Han Sen settled Sumi down there. Han Sen then called on Cheap Sheep and Green Cow to give him a citrep on the shelter, so he could learn how things had been and if any important events had unfolded in his absence. Boss Mun, with us here, the shelter has been doing fine. Cheap Sheep continued to compliment himself, and tell Han San how well he had performed. And he really had done well. He had done a great job while Han San was gone and kept everything operational. Han San was satisfied. Red Pony was still in the garden, but Nine Life Cat was gone. Where it went, Han San had no clue, but it never returned. Gu Qingcheng and Elysian Moon remained comfortably in the shelter, and it seemed as if they weren't keen on the concept of leaving. Gu Qingcheng rarely left the shelter, but Elysian Moon frequently did. She came back from time to time, but she never communicated with Han Senator. She would always come back and return to Gu Qingqing's side. Han Sen wanted to ask Gu Qingqing a few questions, 
and see if she was the number four mentioned in the diary, but after thinking it over for a while, he decided to go back to the Alliance first. He wanted to see his family and his son. Hansen had been gone for a long time, and he had missed them quite a bit. It is a shame Little Flower is too young and cannot go to the shelter and I don't have enough power to ensure Ji Yin Ran could become a demigod safely. The whole family could hunt creatures together if we were all here, and we'd see each other a lot more. Han Sin Sai hid. When he went home, though, Han Sin thought something in the atmosphere had soured. Luolan and Ji Yin Ran were already there waiting for him, and when they saw him, they looked at him as if he was a criminal. Has something happened? Han Sin asked quickly. Nothing has happened but you have a big problem. Luolan looked at Han San as if she was a judge, and she spoke with alarming seriousness. What problem do I have? Han San did not understand. You went to Godslayer Shelter? Luolan asked. Han San Nu did. I was on my way through. Due to a business arrangement, I had to go. But don't you worry, I haven't established any ties to them. It's done. Looking very angry, Luolan pointed to the gift box on the table. She said, If nothing happened, then why did old stubbornness send these things here? Old stubbornness? You mean Luo Haiteng? What did he send here? Does he want to teach Han Yen some horrible skill again? I'm telling you, she shouldn't learn that stuff. It'll harm her lifespan, Han Sun said quickly. Luolan shook her head and said, These were my favorite snacks. After all these years, he still remembers. You better tell me what you did with him. There's no way that old stubbornness would concede to me and ask Luo Li to deliver these things. Luo Li brought it, but there were some items in there she didn't know about. It must have been his idea. Luo Lan said she'd never go back to see the Luo family again, but when Luo Haiteng sent her those things, it made her feel weird. She was both touched and confused. After so many years, Luo Haiteng finally understood. He didn't come but the items he had included obviously meant a lot. Luolan didn't believe someone with Luo Haitong's personality would do this, but Luolan was worried Han Sin had sacrificed something, which prompted the gesture. Han Sin himself was surprised. Although he had seen Luo Haiteng in Godslayer Shelter, he hadn't agreed to any of the man's requests or given him anything. So, why would the old man send a gift? It seemed as if he really wanted to re-establish a connection with Luolan. But given Luolan's personality, Hansen knew what Luo Haiteng might have been like. It had been many years since he saw her, and there had been no texting or form of communication in the meantime. If he'd really wanted to send her something, he'd had plenty of time to do it. It wouldn't have had to be that day, of all days. Now that he had sent something, it obviously had something to do with him having just met Han San. Mom, I didn't do anything for him. I didn't agree to anything. Hansen went on to relay the story of how he encountered Luo Haiteng. You dodged his palm? Luolan looked at Hansen with wide open eyes. She looked as if she was in shock. I didn't learn the falsified Sky Sutra, either. But you know that I knew about it, and what to expect. Is there something wrong with the fact that I managed to dodge it? Hansen didn't think there was a problem. No, there's nothing wrong. You did a great job. Luolan was very happy to hear this. She put her fingers on Han Sen's cheek and rubbed it. My good son, you really did a great job. What does that mean? Han Sen looked confused, not entirely sure what had just happened. He had very rarely seen her this happy. Nothing. It's just good, that's all. Luolan smiled and left, not really answering Han Sen's question. Han Sen rested at home for another two days before returning to the sanctuary. When he got back, he went directly to Gu Qingqing's room. Just as he was about to knock on the door to her chamber, he heard Gu Qingqing's voice say, Come in, the door isn't locked. Han Sen lightly pushed the door open. Gu Qingcheng was in front of a table, drawing with an old pin. Han Sen learned about what she was doing in a history lesson. It was calligraphy. She was using a brush pin, a tool devised by ancient humans to write. They weren't really used anymore. The few that still existed were typically used by artists for a few odd tasks. He hadn't expected Gu Qingcheng to be the sort to love them like so. Han San wasn't very good with art, but he could tell that she must have had a lot of practice to draw with the level of talent she had. Gu Qingcheng lowered her pin. She took a moment to admire her own artwork before asking, Why were you looking for me? Han San smiled and then said, 
I met someone who told me some wild things about you. I don't know if he was a liar, so I'd like to ask you for the truth about these things he said about you. Oh, what did he say about me? Gu Qingcheng looked at Han San as if her curiosity had been piqued. Han San had already established how he'd approach this conversation in his mind. Now, he smiled and said, he said you killed cruel Qi, is that true or false? Gu Qingcheng frowned and said, maybe, I don't remember. I have killed many creatures in my lifetime. Cruel Qi was a famous demigod super creature. If you killed one such as that, you wouldn't have forgotten, would you? Hansen didn't believe her. I really did just forget. Why would I lie about this? Gu Qingqing said, with lifted lips. Hansen thought that if Gu Qingqing wanted to lie, she would have just said a simple yes or no. He couldn't quite tell from the answer he was given. It's okay if you don't remember that. He said a lot of other things. He said you drank the pee of a jade beast to avoid dying of thirst out in the desert and Han San was going to say a few similar statements, but before he could finish speaking the first, Gu Qingqing's face changed. Impossible. No one knew about that. How would you know? Gu Qingqing stared at Han San as if she had seen a ghost. You really did this? Then did you hide inside the hunting sky beast's egg and end up getting sat on by the hunting sky beast for an entire month? Hansen asked. Impossible. No one should know about this. Who did you hear it from? Gu Qingqing's face changed. She ran in front of him and grabbed him by the sleeves. I said I met someone, didn't I? He told me these things, saying that he saw you commit these acts. I thought he was lying. I had no idea he was telling me the truth. Hansen was both surprised and happy. He was now sure Gu Qingqing was the number four in the diary. Impossible. When I did these things, Humans did not even know what a steamer was. Who could have seen me? Gu Qingcheng looked annoyed. Hansen froze. His eyes opened wide as he looked at her, and he said, Steamer? That is something from ancient times. Were you in the sanctuary all the way back then? Hansen couldn't believe what he was hearing, but Gu Qingcheng had unwittingly proved what he wished to know. Gu Qingcheng frowned as she stared at him. She said, You are right. I am from that era. I was in the sanctuary even during ancient times. Tell me who told you this stuff. When I did these things, humans could not appear in the sanctuaries. They shouldn't have been able to see me. No way. Back then, there were no teleporters. There weren't even generators. How were you able to enter the sanctuary? You're joking, right? Hans San heard every word, but he found it hard to believe. Does it look like I am joking? Gu Qingcheng said coldly. But that is not right. Even if you entered the shelter, that would have been at least 10,000 years ago. Even as a demigod, your few hundred year lifespan should have long been over. How have you lived for so long? Gu Qingcheng had admitted to something quite strange. He didn't believe it. I don't care if you believe it or not. I only want you to tell me who told you this stuff. Gu Qingcheng's face looked dim. A chill had run down her spine. The things she had done were something no other human could have seen. The things Han San spoke of were events she believed no one else would know about. Spirits and creatures couldn't have known, either. Now that Han San had said this, it spooked her quite a bit. If someone knew about these things, then it meant someone had been watching her in ancient times and even up until now. This was a pretty scary thing to learn. Is there a way for you to prove to me you hail from ancient times? Han San saw that she wasn't actually joking. He had a number of different questions he wished to ask her.